What's up, everybody? Give me a second, sorry. What is up? Sorry for not streaming yesterday. I'm not really sorry, honestly. I had a good time. It was the, it was the last time I could play hockey in a while. They're melting the rink down to do some renovations. So it probably won't be back up until um, like September. So <clears throat> I, I saw the opportunity to go play some hockey and I took it, okay? Sorry, not sorry. It just happens. Pickups on Tuesday. It's the worst fucking day pickup could be on, but I don't make the fucking rules, okay? How are we doing, everyone? How are we doing, everybody? Bit dude, big stream day. Glad ATP got his account back too. Thanks for uh, hitting me up about that, my friend. Um, Destiny's good again. All it took was the hoverboard to turn the ship around. Dog. They... They fucking cooked, okay? And they are still cooking, um... I don't even know. You know what I mean? I, uh, I, I, I've, I've been kind of, uh, spewing my disbelief on Twitter <laughs> just cause like, I was so convinced this was going, I, there are, there are probably 500 clips out there of me saying, don't be excited for end of the light. It's not going to be anything big. Don't be excited. Don't expect anything. You're just gonna get disappointed. I mean, dude, I was so confident it wasn't gonna be anything. They had no time to make it. How was I supposed to know? How was I supposed to know, man? You know what I mean? They had three months to make this shit. How was I supposed to know that Bungie fucking, they could do this, you know? God damn. So I'm so excited. I'm I'm so excited for the final shape stream next week. Um, we'll be streaming that live. I uh, I have Tuesday off, so um, I'll be going live 30 minutes before the stream. Uh, we'll do a live reaction to the new Lightfall stream, and then we are going for fucking ever on Into the Light. Okay, we are going. Uh, Lordy Lord Scary, you're looking like a snack. Hey, thank you, man. Connor, what music you've been listening to lately? Uh, the new While She Sleeps album, Self Hell, came out last week. It is. Uh, really good. It's a divisive album for sure. I think it's phenomenal. And uh, Era has a new album, Cure, coming out tomorrow, and that shit is going to cook. So I'm super excited for that, man. Um, I don't know how they did this, man. They're working on the missions before Into the Light, Numb Nuts. Yeah. Uh, no, actually they weren't. <laughs> and it's not even the missions, right? Like it's like the thing is uh, the thing that people need to realize. We've had multiple people who were like laid off and can talk about this stuff. They have said that they had no idea that the expansion was going to be laid off. Some leaders of some teams knew that the, or sorry, excuse me, the expansion was going to be delayed. Excuse me. The, some leaders of some teams uh, allegedly knew this was going to happen, that it was going to get delayed. But like, this is all, you know, none of this was planned. It's phenomenal. It's crazy. Into the light, uh, first seal completion. Probably not, because I imagine you'll need every gun for it. So we'll probably have to wait like a month and a half. So, uh, unbelievable. I was looking through some concept art and game uh, for Roots and Nightmare. I saw Nezzy was never meant to be the raid boss, but actually some angelic tormentor. Well, no, I mean, Nezzy was just supposed to look different. Nezzy was supposed to have a cape and stuff. Do you think Onslaught was originally made for the final shape and they brought it up? No, so people are like obsessed with this idea. I don't think it makes any sense. Like everything that we have seen for the final shape is like in the portal. You know what I mean? They want the entire expansion to be Pale Heart, us versus the witness, that sort of thing. So a mode that is like very directly and intentionally outside of the portal doesn't really make any sense to me um maybe we'll learn more in the future what this actually seems more like to me like what i would see is more plausible is a it's just brand new and they just have a couple activity designers like that are fucking killing it um or two maybe it was like partially scrapped content 
from earlier in the year or something that they never got around to. Um, and then they were like, hey, we can finish this or something. I can maybe see that being true. I don't see any world where it makes sense for this to be Final Shape content, personally. You need this t-shirt, dude. I, I, it's like one of my favorite pieces of band merch. It's so good. Um, Like I could see this, like for instance, like we know for Season of the Wish, you know, it's the first. Uh, so Season of Deep had two activities. Season of the Witch had two activities. Season of the Wish only had one. And this sort of thing would actually fit a lot better in that season where it's like, oh, we're preparing to go in the portal. We also have to defend. But it doesn't really make sense from like a player engagement standpoint or like a narrative standpoint to be like, oh, we've already gone into the portal. Now defend around the portal, right? Like it's it's that's very much like a narrative step back almost. Um, with, Final Shape is going to be very conclusive. So yeah. I uh, also stated uh, the in-universe expansion is for sent up defenses from the Guardians leave the city to go in the, the Pale Heart. Yeah, that's that's true as well. Um, have you listened to New Boundaries album? No, I, I do have it queued up on my Spotify though. I do plan to. People are freaking out about it. If I had to take a guess, this was something that was planned or conceptualized for your season of Defiance, Pyramids Attacking Earth. Yeah, that too. I mean, the, like I said, like I, I, I'm I, sure there's all sorts of stuff that is like scrapped content or cut content that was either conceptualized or whatever, um, sitting somewhere on the cutting room floor. Uh, maybe. I, I, have no, I literally have zero idea. I do not know. I, I could not speak to it. I will not speak to it. I have no idea. Uh, but to me, I do not think that any of the gameplay aspects of this expansion i'm trying to wait i don't want to put my foot in the mouth in my mouth but like any of the i i don't think the weapons were part of final shape i don't think um the uh i don't think the reprised missions were part of final shape like that maybe could be it just seems like that would be a really weird time to drop that uh i don't think onslaught was part of final shape pantheon might my, my like pantheon maybe like that's the most likely i think to have been part of like a final shape type expansion honestly um uh it may be the returning exotic missions i have no idea i i no idea uh but onslaught out of everything we're getting i think makes the least amount of sense to be part of final shape so so In before all the uh, asset files or name of Final Shape codenames, we'll find out. We'll find out next week for sure. You know what I mean? We still don't know enough about Pantheon to see if it would fit. Seems like a system thing. Well, that's like a, it's a very like, it's not a themed thing, right? A, a boss rush mode seems very like end of saga-ish. It's It seems very like Age of Triumphy, right? Like, okay, you've done everything. Here's a boss rush mode. So that, I could see that like conceptually being part of a of something like a final shape that's supposed to be like an end cap. Um, once again, I have no fucking idea, okay? I have no idea. Do you think there should be more space between DLCs so we get more updates like the 30th anniversary and Into the Light? Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe, I don't fucking know. I just want content, man. I just want whatever whatever makes the best content. I don't fucking care otherwise, you know what I mean? Yo, garbage, thank you for the 13 months. What's the idea beyond boss rush and how does a scale of new boss mechanics? Uh probably not new mechanics if I had to guess, but we'll find out. They said they'd talk more about it in a swap. Here, let's go ahead and start watching this and start breaking it down. Uh I'm really confused about what drops when in the end of the light. Uh here, we actually this is fucking I saw this on Reddit. I saw this on Reddit today. And I thought, I literally thought, oh, no one's going to need this, but I'm glad I saw it. <laughs> I was like, everyone pays attention, surely. Uh, this is uh, Beneficial Yak 9608 made this beautiful calendar. Um, God, I hate Imgur. Uh, so on Tuesday, which once again, I'm off for. So uh, we'll start streaming at noon, one hour before reset. Um, 30 minutes later, Bungie does their final shape live stream. We'll be live reacting to that. You should hang out with us. Uh, and then, uh, into the light launches on Tuesday, we get onslaught, we get the whisper mission. Um, and, uh, the first half of the onslaught weapons, 
Then every week for the next three weeks, we get two weapons a week. So we get six on launch and then two and then two and then two. Uh, those will all be launched by 4.30 is the, is the final two that launch. Um, we will also be getting a new, that's the Pantheon launches then. So it, 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 into the light drops, we get Onslaught, six weapons, Whisper. Next week, two weapons. Next week, two weapons. Next week, two, the final two weapons and Pantheon. The week after that, then we get Outbreak and the new PvP maps. Uh, and then less than a month after that is Final Shape. I mean, like, this, the next two months are going to fucking fly. It's going to be crazy. Anything in particular that excites you about the episodes? I look, man. I don't, I, <laughs> we have this in Final Shape to worry about. I have no idea what to expect from the episodes. I don't even want to fucking think about the episodes. We have baller content for the next two months and then the final shape. And then, you know, that's at least a month or two of baller content. I guess the episode starts a couple weeks after final shape comes out, but I have no idea. I am, I am locked into this shit right now. Uh, my brain cannot handle thinking about that much content. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Bungie cooked. I mean, they did. They did. They definitely did. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, uh, I will share this. I will share the link to the Reddit post so you guys can give him Reddit karma. There you go. But yeah, pretty good. Um, I'm excited, man. Here, let's go ahead and watch the stream. Um... All those weapons are an awesome set. And welcome back. It's good to see y'all. Welcome to our third of three developments. I've got to say, okay, look, all three streams, Andy has had ridiculous drip, okay? The hoodie underneath a flannel. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I couldn't pull that off, but that's a fucking awesome look, okay? I, I... I don't know if I could pull that. Mostly because most of my hoodies are like, you know, tie-dye or they got shit on them. But the plain hoodie with the flannel on top, like that's a fucking hard look, dude. Do you have Tusk yet? I have not played this week, so no. Developer live streams to talk about all the cool stuff coming up with Destiny 2 Into the Light. Uh, my name's Andy. I work on the social media team here at Bungie, and we've got an awesome set of, of uh, topics to go ahead and cover today. But first things first, we want to win it. We wanted to go ahead and remind you guys of one clarification we made. For starters, all of the weapons in the Brave Arsenal will now be releasing on April 30th. So, uh, for a free expansion, literally the two streams were enough to expect a good content drop. Um, I don't know what that's in reference to, but yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, have you seen my messages in your Discord regarding the Max Triumph score bug? Uh, I don't know if you're specifically... I've had like five people adding me on Twitter and sending me messages and stuff. Um, I, I have been meaning to reach out to um, someone and uh, see if, if that is a known issue. Um, but I can't promise anything. I don't, I don't have like, a, you know what I mean? But I, I will... Um, I do. I, I did plan to try to, to talk to someone like that. What about like the dye hoodie and then a gray flannel? That might go hard. Ooh. Or yeah, a tie dye hoodie. And then, yeah, that might, man. Um, no, this is not my first time watching the stream. Uh, yes, I have an advanced code. It's Scaro9 at checkout. You should get it. Also, we have a starter pack that you can get. Uh, where you can get a Scare 9 keychain and a shaker and some sample flavors. It's like 15 bucks and it comes with four sample flavors and a shaker and the keychain. Best way to support me. But also just code Scare 9 is 10% uh, off. Not a big fan of the tribute mode. Oh, the Iron Banner tribute. Is it safe to snort lines of advance? I would not recommend that. Just yeah. as a quick reminder, all of that weapon, all those weapons will be available for you to farm over the course of Onslaught. Uh, there's many ways. I hope they keep this format here, the stream format. This felt very good. I love being able to hear from other like developers from all over uh, the place. Um, we got to see a lot of brand new faces, which I think is always really cool. And once again, I talked about this last week. I love, like, one of my favorite things is just seeing how genuinely excited they get to talk about what they've worked on. Like, 
that's awesome you know um i just love seeing that so i hope i hope they continue this format it seems like the feedback's been really good and whoever the pr genius was that's attaching different emblems to all of these streams give them a fucking raise someone at bungie finally discovered that the emblem community is fucking ridiculous and uh man <laughs> They have two emblems for this. They had an emblem for the other ones. They have an emblem for the next one. It's just like, God, you guys are so smart. You're, like, you're popping off right now. <laughs> what you feel about it. For starters, obviously, you can go ahead and attune yourself to a weapon. Happy to so show you what you I mean. No, I, I know. Uh, I, there's just a bunch of people missing one random point. Like, I know the problem. Go ahead and grab that recluse that you've had your eye on for so long. You've got the opportunity to go ahead and do that. That uh, outbreak is sexy. Onslaught, uh, also, there's going to be the chest up by Shax as well, so you can go ahead. And I was thinking about this. So uh, whenever you raise $125,000 for the Bungie Foundation, they make you a replica of, a, of any exotic that you choose. And I we were talking about this when that was announced because I'm at $80,000. Uh, we'll probably hit it at some point. Um, and I was, I was really struggling to think, like, what exotic? Because I don't really use a lot of exotics. And I was like, what exotic will I use? And I think I'm going... If I hit it, I think I'm going to do Whisper. Because Whisper the mission really is what kick-started the channel uh i was at like less than ten thousand subs when that dropped and i feel like that really skyrocketed my channel into uh, my first popularity swing and i've been getting comments on that video because people have been getting recommended my og i was the very first person to be streaming the whisper mission the very first one across all platforms i'm so confident in that statement I was the very first one. I was, this was the, the summer before I started my PhD and I was, I was doing content creation full time for a couple of months and I was just playing Destiny and I had read it open and it just happened, it refreshed and I saw like two minutes after it was posted, someone, the original person, the original person that, um, that found that and made the Reddit post, I started streaming within five or 10 minutes of that. I was definitely the first person streaming it uh, and it, skyrocketed the channel it was awesome people have been getting recommended this video look at baby scarab look at this shit uh yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh that's All right, guys. me this is not a drill hopefully everything's ready how are we doing let's get in here i want to show you guys the freaking the reddit thread i want to show you the reddit thread I want to show you the Why? Oh, game. sorry, I was clicking it. it was, I didn't know. If you hold click on a YouTube video, fast forward. I didn't know that. Um, this is, unironically, Michael, this is the last time I cut my hair, right before this. Uh, I started grad school. A couple of months after this, I got super stressed out, and I haven't had short hair since. Here, we've got a minute 40. Jeez, man. God damn. God, I'm such a baby. Awful cam quality? Fuck, dude. I'm so skinny. My face is so defined. God, I'm a fat ass now, dude. Shit. I've got a beard and shit now? Look at this neck beard. I can grow a mustache. Look at this hair. That dumbass didn't even have a PhD. That's Mr. Scarrow 9, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell dude god damn anyways we try not to talk about baby scarrow i was so skinny back then dude jeez beyond nostalgia can we agree that zero hour is better than whisper no i i like zero hour a lot the vibes of whisper were immaculate i think the puzzle was better in whisper uh i think the exotics better from whisper um, I like the, the IO Vex theme a lot better than the, the tower theme personally. I think Trevor's really good, but I think everything else in Whisper is just better in my opinion. Farm some additional. What music were you listening to then? Uh, same thing. Uh, I guess less heavy pre grad school. My favorite band. Ooh, that's a good fucking question. I hadn't discovered Bring Me the Horizon yet. I ha uh, 
Ice Nine Kills was uh, that is when I discovered Ice Nine Kills that summer. Maybe a little. I might not even have discovered them yet when that went up. Um. So definitely like Five Fear and Death Punch. That's like edgy fucking, you know, Southern metal scarrow. God, I'm I'm grew out of that. <laughs> definitely Kill Switch Engage, dude. I was listening to that shit all the time there but worry not you'll have plenty of chances to dive in grab the weapons you want whether it be through our site yeah when i dude in high school uh i loved five finger death punch i've i've definitely grown out of that but i was i was a big uh five finger death punch fan for sure quest lines or otherwise uh those opportunities will be wide open and available monster energy but scare that's exactly a whole new right. set of topics to discuss today uh including some reprise exotic missions a look at the pvp map pack and a couple more details at the end that we'll go ahead and share with you in just a bit uh but as usual it won't just be me talking through it so let's go ahead and tell you about the wonderful folks i have here just to my left some incredible developers here at bungie uh we'll go ahead and start with the gentleman here to my left friend of the show one and only mr tom farnsworth senior design lead is here the at volume okay tom, welcome back is it good i'm back I bringing me back i know it's come on you're the best we can't we couldn't possibly let you go <laughs> no I, I, of course i'm the creative lead for into the light yeah. but we're yeah, really here to talk about all the great work the team has done and these individuals here uh, with us today yeah. we're going to talk about some exotic missions yes uh some new rewards associated with them uh, and some PvP stuff. So let's let's dive in. Let's yeah. let's talk to everybody else it's here. Great stuff. We also have uh, sitting just next to Tom as well. We have Rob Adams, one of the art oh, directors exactly. here Sorry at Bungie, that. uh, and because I'm not listening to come headphones. up with the concept of Into the Light. Rob, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited Absolutely. to be here. Yeah. No, it's good to have you. We have a. Uh, Dill, I already said I'd reach out to, to some people, man. I can't promise we were anything. Before though. the show about a like lot of got... stuff, we'll have plenty of fun details to dive into here in just a little bit. Uh, and of course. The one and only Is Willie Chang, like activity designer here at Bungie. Uh, how you doing, Willie? Good morning. I, I can put in headphones uh, if I need to. For the folks at home that may not be familiar with you or your work, uh, what do you do here at Bungie, if you don't mind my asking? I'm an activity designer uh, for Into the Light. I worked on the Zero Hour Reprise. Excellent. Well, with that, we uh, we may as well start diving into the show at hand. We have a lot of cool stuff to start I with. I love how uh, Willie just, like, drops that. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I fucking worked on on zero hour, bro. It's like, oh. In addition to, oh, like shit. you mentioned, some awesome reprise exotic missions, including The Whisper and Zero Hour, which will both uh, feature, pardon me, craftable versions of each weapon. But let's go ahead and start at the top with The Whisper. Uh, we've had a chance to go ahead and kind of pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and start from the very top. Uh, Rob, you were there when it all started. Why did Bungie make The Whisper to begin with? Well, I think this conversation is so important and i think i'm i'm really worried that for a time bungie lost this the the sentiment that is about to be expressed and 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 this year we've seen it return with avalon with whetstone with imbaru these sorts of things and i i just i don't know i really fucking hope that the the hype generated from whisper and from zero hour and avalon and whetstone and in baru um i really hope bungie really takes like a, a a second to really appreciate how important secrets are to this game and to especially the hardcore player base it is they are so important puzzles and secrets and i the only reason i say that is because there was a solid two-year period all of beyond light all of witch queen um where there was nothing we didn't get any secrets at all and, and so it, it is just so important that they keep this mentality this guy right here should be he was part of the original whisper team i i designate him master puzzle bungee person okay um <laughs> i'm just i it's just so important and we just cannot lose that again we cannot lose it cannot lose it yo andre what's up did you see tdd's uh destiny 2 content creator tier list i did a tier <laughs> in the first few months of d2 i want to say like the first three to five months we felt like there weren't enough secrets in the game it felt like the game was pretty well known mm -hmm. you know and and kind of like discovered mm -hmm. And it just needed some big secret to be found by the players. And I want to have a conversation with this guy so bad. Uh, with this whole, the bit. team like that would, worked on this? It over really well. We, we <sighs> hoped it would, at least. Sheesh. Yeah. And we had all this nostalgia for the Vault of Glass and Black Spindle. 
And then one day we were just sitting in a conference room and we're like, what if we just made another black spindle mission, but we made it a lot bigger, Yeah. right? Yeah. Speaking of, uh, we've got here on screen uh, kind of some, if we can call it as such, yeah. original concept art. I love the this. It's concept art. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Uh, so, well, that's actually the very first whiteboard drawing when we got all excited and we ran and found a conference room and we started, you know, drawing what this could do, yeah. what we would want to build. And really, this kind of shows some of the magic uh, formula, you know, like we, we have I love a, this. a contract. Yeah, what's up, Kyle? I highly agree. One, uh, one that lo I love the puzzles and things we're doing for Wish Under, stuff like that keeps it interesting. I just, I love this stuff, man. It's so important. We, we called it a contract. And, <laughs> so important. And this was... An unspoken agreement between us as devs. And this as well. I do, I do think that even with the return to puzzles, I feel like we could return to this mentality a little bit more. Um, I, I will say Whetstone had a pretty good, it was pretty difficult, especially with the very, I think it was like a 15 minute timer, a pretty short timer. Uh, so I, I think we're heading in the right direction, but I feel like for the most part, we've we've lost a lot of this. And uh, I would like to see, and maybe that's just because of the sandbox. You know, the sandbox is utterly destroyed right now, only about to get worse. Um, so this right here, I, I like this mentality. I'm glad there are people at Bungie openly expressing that this mentality is important. And I would like to see it mixed with puzzles and stuff more in the future, right? And the hardcore, super engaged players. Yeah. And it really was, if you can pass a test where your mind is going to be tested. Mm -hmm. Your fighting, right? Yeah, uh, is going to be tested, and you're going to be able to pass these tests, right? Yeah, your movement, your mind, your fighting. Yeah, if you can get past these tests, you're going to be rewarded with great power. Yeah, and that was the contract. And so one of the other things we did, and you can see it up here in the uh, whetstone left, was yeah, um is there the uh, instrument, uh, the, uh, the, 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 fuck it, the scout rifle no one uses. <laughs> that one. Um, episode should have at least one of these types of streams. The difference between this and a trailer one hour before season is wide contrast. I agree. Uh, this is the best type of marketing they could do. Wicked implement. Thank you. Um, not necessary full side puzzles, even exotic missions where you have to put together some things instead of a linear quest. Yeah, I agree. Um, Wetso was more of a combat challenge than any platforming in a cool environment. I think it is important to have diversity. I, you know, uh, for instance, like Whisper is much more combat focused than something like Zero Hour, which is much more platforming. Uh, they have they they both have elements of both, but Whisper is much more combat focused. Zero Hour is much more platforming focused. Um, Whetstone is pretty much purely combat focused, but in a really good way. Uh, and then you know you have like Avalon, which is a fucking dungeon. Um, you have uh, uh, Niobe Labs, which is all puzzles and stuff. Like I think it's really important to have all of them um, like that. Personally, there's a little crack, and then the path continues. Yeah. And then, you know that's the red herring. And so we thought, well, rather than lead players by the nose and have a bunch of narrative and and make it really obvious what you're supposed to do. Yeah. What if they get into this mysterious place and they don't know what to do? Mm -hmm. And when they go down the path that they think is right, it's not. Yeah. You know, and they go blazing right past the actual opening. Yeah. And so we knew that that, or we, we were pretty confident that that was going to appeal to the hardcore players because once they learned the path, right. they could then bring their friends in and show them, and then we would have the videos. This know, sort of thing, like literally, I cannot, I cannot understate not uh, how big of an impact Whisper had. I mean, it, it made my channel, it made CB Gray's channel, dude, and, and Pause, Reset, Play um, made their channels, dude. Uh, and, and just so many friendships were made in, in, in this uh, area, uh, activity. The community loved it so much. Like, I think if there's like a singular point that I think changed so much of Destiny more than anything else, I think it's the Whisper mission. If I had to pick a single thing in Destiny 2 that truly transformed the game and, and transformed people's lives and everything, um, it's it's Whisper. It has to be Whisper. Um, I, I can't think of a single thing in this entire game. Like, the only thing that I can think of that rivals it in all of Destiny is Trials. Uh, trials existing in the in the first place. But um, And maybe, like, the presence of, like, Wraith. So, like, Volta Glass, the first one, you know, transformed. But I, in terms of, like, the impact that it has had on on 
everyone's lives because it made my channel because it made cb gray's channel because it made pause's channel because so many other people it made their channels and the impact that has gone to have on other people as well and, and then just all the friendships and people getting the general community excited in this game like it had an unbelievable impact on the game unbelievable do you think they changed the green room um i don't know they didn't show it right so i hope you could still farm throwaway that was my favorite to, yeah. to As I let their friends. I love go. what he says about the secret agreement before between the developer and the hardcore players, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I think we need to get more into that. They're and I think they're heading that direction once again with Whetstone, with Embaru, with um, uh, uh, the Pantheon. Like all of these things are like okay, let's cook. You know, so I'm excited. First, that first time to watch yeah. him fall off the yeah, edge yeah. helplessly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Also, too, is you know to kind of focus a little bit more on the art direction as well. Uh, I think to put it lightly, the the vibe in the whisper is pretty intense. Can you tell us what it was like, kind of? Well, I even have the timer once forty minutes. The twenty minute timer is what made discovering the way in those first times so or memorable. I'm sad it's gone uh, since zero hour. Well, Whetstone brought it back. Um, I I'm not going to pass judgment on the timer until we see the activity space and bringing we don't know how they changed it that's that's just the truth you know what i mean so we'll see to life yeah well we went we wanted this like intense mystery vibe right the mystery of i'm on i'm on io and i found this this picture this elicits such an, a, a strong existed. emotional yeah. response and for me where does it go just right? that color that scheme and also the feeling like, of dread yeah. And so, yeah, a lot of that. yeah and, and it's easy Fuck. to get a vibe if you listen to one type of music, for example. Right. So we were watching Stranger Things and listening to the soundtrack, and I got really into, you know, building this this traversal puzzle. It has a really consistent vibe because it was just I one never would have, like, pegged this as, like, a Stranger Things thing. You know what I mean? Like, inspired partially by that or the vibes, but I totally get it now. You know? Let's be honest, these streams mainly exist to bring confidence back to Bungie for the final shape. It's uh, definitely a good result, but the final shape is struggling in pre-order numbers and confidence from the player base. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it is, um, it is important because, like, I, I've talked about this before. The whole point of this is, yeah, not only bring confidence back in Bungie, but get people excited about the game again. You can't just wait till the final shape launches. Um, you have to get people excited beforehand so they're feeling good going into the final shape. I've, I've talked about this a lot, but if the community isn't feeling good, Bungie could release the best content ever and it does not matter because most of our perception of, of a live service game is how we are feeling as a community, how we're interacting, uh, our general sentiments, our echo chambers, that sort of stuff. So if they start here and they get us all hyped and excited, which they done, I've been saying this for months, by the way, I've literally been saying this for months. Um, you can go back to streams. Someone probably clipped it somewhere. Uh, I've been saying this for months. They have to use the marketing machine, get people hyped, get people play, feeling very good and playing the game and, and remembering how good the game feels and excited for future content, which they're doing. That way, when the final shape hits, we are all blown away together and we're starting from a good point. We're starting here and they're going to blow us away, hopefully. That's how, that's how important it is. So... I'm glad yeah, they seem to be hitting, to and uh, they're yeah, blowing my yeah, expectations. My hotline, my like, I, I've yeah. talked about this. I didn't really have expectations for Into the Light. I, I didn't think it was going to be much of anything, and they are absolutely destroying my fucking mind, so. Yeah, yeah. Inside, honestly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, too, is we've got uh, another picture as well of the, uh, the infamously titled Green Room as well. Um, there was a really cool anecdote you had kind of about the development process of this. What was it like bringing this kind of very iconic, I guess I'd say, Destiny Room to life? Yeah, well, this this is funny because there was this thing that we wanted to try, right? Mm -hmm. Make it make a room that has a trap in the center that if you mess up, you end up going down the trap and you, you get punished for it. And yeah. when you get out, you end up back in the room and it just happens again and again and again. And there's all these different ways that you try to find your way out of this room. Right. So the test was to make a tiny version of this, like just, one quarter scale. This mission we, has so much character, dude, you know? Like... Whisper tried so many things and it did every one of them correctly. Every one of them. The secrets making you wait. The, the, uh, it had that FOMO aspect because it's like, oh man, if I fail this, I'm going to have to wait for another public event. People don't like that. I like that personally. 
it, it, it did the exploration thing. It didn't exp it didn't hold your hand. It didn't explain anything. It did this sort of thing incredibly well. It did the Vault of Glass puzzle. It did the crazy combat challenge. And it did the rewards. The Thousand Wing ship um, and, and Whisper. Like, fuck, dude. This Whisper did literally everything correct. It's unbelievable. Brought it into the playtest lab. Yeah. We had Cosmo and Dylan. We had a bunch of our testers and designers in there. Yeah. And I just waited, right? And I waited to, for someone to find the hidden shortcut, right? Like, what would happen? Yeah, when, that's what's fair, Wobby. When they find that hidden shortcut. Yeah. And so the first person. But I hope they, you know, they talk about they'll they'll talk about it here in a second. But they're like, oh, we're you're going to be able to load into it anytime. That's fine. That for something like this, that's cool. I hope in the future. I do like the idea of just something random triggering something else, though. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, make it make it on a set rotation. Make it so it's, oh, you get one chance an hour or whatever. Uh, but I, I that discovery, like, oh, this is linked to that, like in um, Lost to Light. Like, it only... It, did, was there a requirement for that, or did you just have to run the wrong way? It was a timed mission. Uh, but I forget if you had to do something at the beginning. But, you know, it's like... Uh, like in Call of Duty, like uh, to get the Thunder Gun in Black Ops in in the campaign, you had to shoot like very specific barrels of Nova Six or whatever, and then pick up a tape, like that sort of stuff. These ridiculous steps, uh, this spawns that or whatever. Like I love that, and I don't want to lose that. You know what I mean? Uh, Avalon did this really well. It's like oh, there's there's oracles in the EDZ, and then like you you. You know, it's like one thing leads to another, leads to the secret mission. I love that sort of thing. So, um, I, I just hope, you know, I, I like that. Okay, where, where you can load into this, everyone can experience this. But I, I do hope in the future there's a little bit, or I mean, even zero hour. It was a random fucking room on Titan. You, you went to a, a random part of the patrol zone, a random room in a random part of the patrol zone, and you picked up something from a random box. That's awesome. You know, stuff like that. We, I just love stuff like that. And I, I, I hope we, you know, I, I know like half of this is me saying like, oh, I want more of this, I want more of this, but I do want more of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, what was the mission where you had to use the sniper to see the various hidden symbols? That was Niobe Labs. So just stuff like that, man. Like imagine like, yeah, you're on Neomuna. And you get the, the Vex Storm or whatever. Uh, the Vex Strike Force spawns. But during that mission, there's like a node that appears on the map. And you have to interact with it. And it starts a whole thing. And you know what I mean? Like, I like the idea of having to wait for like a specific thing. Not for everything. Once every couple of years or whatever. You know, don't. it's not, it's not like, oh, every exotic mission needs to be tied to this. But I'm saying, I hope it's a tool or like a way of accessing things that they're not throwing out. Maybe refining a little bit, but not throwing out. So, it's hard to say if Whisper inspired Dungeon since it released in the latter end of Warmind, which I wouldn't, I would not be surprised if Warmind, because I mean, the way that Shattered Throne was released was very similar to Whisper. Um, in terms of like, it just, it was just dropped. Uh, super secret vibe. Like, I, I would be. I would wager that the development of Whisper and, and Shattered Throne were, were very similar. I don't know which one inspired what or whatever, but I'd be shocked if there wasn't some overlap. Found it, they just screamed and started laughing and then everybody started finding it. And based on that reaction, we knew we had something good and then it got scaled up into what you see here and back to the vibe thing again. Yeah. When this got built, all I did was listen to Black Sabbath, the first six albums, like over and over. Yeah. <laughs> so it just has that really, really consistent vibe all the way through. And that's just a, a trick that the whole yeah. team uses to get uh, a theme yeah. or a vibe oh, to right, be we consistent. Have, we're going to go ahead also, too, and start to jump in the activity so we can see this uh, this God, vibe. I want to talk to that team well, so but, badly. Uh, here we are. We're, we're back in this the so as well. This is so fascinating. Uh, really quickly, too, off the top, um, <clears throat> Willie, when it comes to, you know, bringing these... Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they brainstorm very closely, but I don't think it's likely that Whisper is the reason we got Shattered Throne. No, I think the reason we got Shattered Throne is the same reason we got Whisper. I don't, I don't think it was like one two three i was like i think it's one inspired both but they both they fulfill the same you know they address the same thing 
encounters forward, bringing them to the modern era of Destiny. What were some of the bigger challenges? I really want to know why Avalon wasn't a dungeon. I, more than anything, that's the number one thing that really has stuck with me and kind of drives me crazy. It's like, Avalon is a couple of weapons in an armor set away from being a dungeon. You easily could call it a dungeon. Easily could call it a dungeon. Why is it not considered a dungeon? You know? Oh, fuck. Drives me crazy. Uh, really quickly, too, off the top, um, <clears throat> Willie, when it comes to, you know, bringing these encounters forward, bringing them to the modern era of Destiny. Too short? Some three activity, three encounters. Three encounters, traversal in between all of them, puzzles hidden in between. Avalon is like the length of a dungeon. Maybe the traversal is a little shorter than like your average dungeon traversal, but what? fuck it, bro. Avalon and Shattered Throne, Avalon and Pit, they're like the same length, you know? Same, di even like Avalon is harder than most dungeons. Challenges. Uh, in terms of like the harder, mostly because it has a harder difficulty, I guess. That's a little cheating, but. You'd say you have to overcome in order to make sure that they were fitting for today's sandbox. Yeah, so sandbox wise, players nowadays pack a lot more power than they did before. Uh, this, uh, in the new lighting, by the way, uh, this looks so good. Okay. <laughs> clear entire rooms when, when they hit this next section you'll really see when, it uh there uh, sorry am i on super hd right now bungie start streaming in 1440. original state yeah um like, like oh quickly, so i like to beef up the number of oh god it looks so good these encounters and uh later on i might talk more about uh additional tuning that i've done on if this if this person was a real warlock they would have uh they would have popped a grenade they would have well skate. Well, they don't have their super, but they're also using the slowest charging super. So, you know, they'd well skate and just skip this entire section. Totally. Yeah, yeah. We can come back to that in a second. But uh, I think also too. Really do you think? Do, do you think they put a death wall there? By the way, like, I think there's a solid seventy five percent chance they put a death wall right here, because that's what I used to do. Is you pop heat rises and you just fly. Now you can well skate around it. These there has to be a death and, wall there. Uh, later on, I might talk more about. Uh, There's got to be a death wall. Totally, yeah, yeah. We can come back to that in a second. But uh, I think also, too, really quickly, you know, back We in... really need them to say if there will be another final expansion or another expansion after final shape. I don't think we do need them to say that. Like, let's focus on this. You know what I mean? Um, there will, of course, be another expansion after the final shape. It's, if, if there's no expansion after the final shape, not Destiny, Bungie is done, okay? It is, they, they have a, an incredibly gigantic studio that it has unbelievable operating costs and multiple IPs that haven't even launched yet. There will be more expansions for Destiny. It's like not, it doesn't make sense any other way. The day there was a, a very they're just focused on this expansion you had yeah. to kind of hang out on io wait for this mysterious portal to come up yep. um but we've we've made some changes to that as well i think you were mentioning before we hopped on the air oh yeah i mean i was a victim of it right we had the public event with the rng we well, just talk if the, the final right shape one. is the last you know, one, one time i tried Fuck to take it. a co-worker through on Fuck saturday yeah. and i spent like seven hours just yeah. trying to get a few runs because of, because of the public event <laughs> right and that we just had to change that right and, mm. and the team was excited about having a new you know, benefactor, a new character that you, you go and talk to. So you'll be talking to Eris Morn. Eris Morn's gonna tell you some really cool stuff. I don't wanna give it away. Smart, yeah. But you know, you're not gonna have to do Do you think she's like, uh, Zol's coming back? Uh, trigger to get in anymore. Excellent, mm -hmm. oh, that's always good to hear. Giving a chance, especially you know, if people are gonna come, come back in here multiple times as yeah. they kind of build I up like their, the little, their I like the little, I like the little, I don't even know what to call that, a little ramp. Obviously I think that's kind of funny. Component. Uh, also, too, is you know I think it's it's worth mentioning that that this is this has undergone more changes than just the combat landscape. Yeah. Uh, for the veteran players who are coming in here, folks like myself that have mm -hmm. maybe kind of had a lot of this committed to memory, um, how have you gone ahead and made sure that it's fresh for those veteran guardians out there? Yeah. Well, the the, the goal was, how is this going to be exactly what you just said, right? Like if I if I've played this 10, 15, 20 times, I've guided people through, maybe I've I've made a video about how to get through here. How's it going to speak to me, right? Like, right. what's going to be cool for me to go in and do it again? And, this and that was the excited. goal that the team had. This right? makes me we excited. We knew we were going to do this. I made my own list, right? Yeah. Like, I was like, we're going to change this. We're going to move that. We're going to. 
and I was really excited about it. Yeah. So, Tom, so Tom was in this meeting. So we, I show up, and there's like you know 15, 20 people, mm -hmm. and they presented this whole plan, and I had my list all ready to go, and I was going to wait. I was going to listen to all the proposal and everything, and then yeah. start giving <laughs> ideas and stuff. And when they finally finished presenting this plan for how to update this thing, I just deleted my list because it was <laughs> like it was way bigger and way cooler than anything that I'd come up with. Yeah, it was just so neat to see like a fresh take on it. So, if you think you know where the chests are, if you think you know where all the secrets are, if you think you know where all the surprises are, yeah. you don't because they're different. All those old guides and all the old walkthroughs—they're gonna have to be remade. Even though I'll just. Get I can eat. The views are back. <laughs> Give one away. When you first get in, there's that first secret chest room on the right. Right. The anomaly has taken care of that. It's not there anymore. Anomaly has yeah. taken care of itself. So more surprises. <laughs> to the to the Steam guide writers, to the game facts writers, to mm. the folks making their YouTube videos, a revision two is going to be in order sometime soon. Oh yeah. By the sounds of it. Yeah. That's really exciting. Uh, I'm gonna have so many fucking videos on Tuesday. You please juice them all. I'm gonna have too many for the algorithm to keep up with. Also, too is is um, you know, Does are there any other no changes that you guys are particularly excited about when it comes to the whisper? We're gonna move on to zero hour here in a little bit, but um, you know, before we conclude our journey here, uh, Willie, actually on your side, are there any changes in particular that you're excited about? They had about to change the green this, room. This there's up, there's a reason they stop right here. Dated version. I'm excited about the way that the boss fight has changed yeah. for this activity. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll leave that to folks to go ahead and discover on their own uh, when it comes to the launch day of, of the Whisper. But uh, <clears throat> yes, this is good. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Fuck. This is the first thing we're doing on Tuesday is going into Whisper. First look uh, for the folks out there who are, are looking to go ahead and make sure that they, they're ready on day one to go ahead and add another craftable exotic into their, their collection. Uh, obviously, the Whisper is going to be there for you, but we don't want to spoil all of it. You'll have it in your hands soon enough. Uh, and also, some folks out there have already had a chance to play it, so we don't want to go ahead and uncover too many of the mysteries. What does that mean? Does this mean that people have already recorded? Did I not get invited to something? Yo, Scribble, thank you. Obviously, the Whisper is going to be there for you, but we don't want to spoil all of it. You'll have it in your hands soon enough. Uh, and also, some folks out there have already had a chance to play it, so we don't want to go ahead and uncover too many of the mysteries. Bro, if Tuesday rolls around and fucking someone has to cross uploads a video right at reset about all the secrets, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, okay? Okay, they mean the original? I hope that's true. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. Cross, I swear, don't you do it. Uh, up next, we've also got, obviously, another iconic one, Zero Hour. <laughs> Uh, let's start from the top. Can you explain, uh, Rob, the concept behind Trevor? You've obviously got an homage to him on your. I have my, I have my shirt. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a little yeah, bit about what this original concept was? Uh, so, so Trevor was really inspired by this. There's this Japanese game show called Takeshi's Castle, and it's been around a while. And it's great because it has all these physical challenges and people getting knocked down or you know, flipped sick. over and stuff and mm -hmm. trying to get through things and. And there's just a lot of comparisons to what we try to do in Destiny, and we've, we've borrowed from that show and shows like it for a long time for cool ideas. And they have this one bit where the contestants try to get up this hill, and there's this big fake boulder that comes down the hill, <laughs> yeah. right? And there's these little, like, side uh, rooms, you know, like little pockets. Oh, when he was talking about this the entire time, I was just like, oh, it's Grasp of Avarice. So they can try to get into That's That's all I was so thinking we of like, this entire man, time. If we had something like that in the middle of this mission, that would be amazing, yeah. right? Like, and so we had this thing that we called, there, there it is. Yeah, we got some concept art up on the yeah. now. So oh, we had this thing that we called the now. hazard <laughs> for a long time. The hazard is gonna get you, right? And it's gonna come down at you. And on the left, you can see the original whiteboard drawing of what this could look like. <laughs> and there you see the hill with the slots. Yeah. We basically lifted off of Takeshi's castle. Yeah. And then that evolved into what we eventually made as a maze, yeah. right? This is awesome. And then there's the very first drawing of Trevor. And on the right, you can see a concept art by one of our artists named Fan Gao. I mm -hmm. love how it really, it's just a fucking vacuum cleaner, dude. <laughs> and when I looked at it, it had a bit of a vacuum cleaner look. You know, it didn't quite nail the fear. Sure. You know, which, which yeah. we might talk about in a second here. Oh, yeah. So okay. then on the far right, 
you can see the centipede legs and the light and the, the final revision. That's pretty close to how Trevor ended up. Yeah, yeah. it definitely it, it feels terrifyingly familiar in some ways, we'll say. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, and I, you know, kind of while well, we're on the other <laughs> the legs, Good job, Tom. which uh, brings up honestly another great example I'd love to touch on as well is, um, you know, as, as a guardian myself, we've we've felled gods, we've fought yeah. some of the most difficult battles in the universe, whether it's against our fellow guardian or, or the many foes that set foot inside the solar system. Uh, when it comes to Trevor in particular, it elicits a very primal, sincere fear. How did you guys kind of elicit that from players who have obviously conquered so much? Well, I think there's this like satisfaction from scaring people that's inherent in everybody. Like yeah. we've all scared oh, yeah. somebody, I think at some oh, point, yeah. it's just super fun, right? Yep. So what could, what could we do in Destiny to actually make people feel fear? And, and the team was super excited about how to try to tackle that problem. Because you're right, right? Like, Guardians can just jump away, and we kill everything, and we're just uh, gods. Invisible and dodge away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to do it. Yeah. So how do you, how do you scare uh, our players in the game, right? So the first step was drop you in a maze. Yeah. Uh, there's something in there that you cannot kill. I know, Sai. I think about that all the time. Like... It's so, it was so much easier to make a create. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sai says Destiny 2 was so vanilla and slow back then. It's hard to even believe we even had Sprint. We were still using double primaries when this shit came out. No, we weren't. Sorry. When Whisper came out, we were still using double primaries. Um, we had just gotten secondaries with Forsaken. So uh, I guess this was about six months into having a secondary slot. Still brand new. Um, yeah, like there was barely any movement tech. There were, you know what I mean? Like, the, there's no customization. Like, it is, thinking back to how vanilla Destiny 2 vanilla was, or Destiny 1 was with build crafting and, and movement and sandbox, it is unbelievable how far we have come. The game is completely alien from a player approach. It's crazy. You get Titans skate. Yeah, that's true. Titans used to be the fastest. That's right. Now Titans are unironically the slowest by a lot because they're the only class that can't consistently skate. So it's crazy, man. Think about how awful the game would feel if you went back and played Destiny 1. <laughs> Think about how bad the game would feel if they just if you just got like sucked through time and then you had to play vanilla Destiny 2 again. It's crazy. We're just like it's unbelievable the things we can do now. You can't jump mm -hmm. up because the ceiling is just above your, your head, right? Yeah. So those were the first three things. This thing is faster than you. Yeah. So you know you're in there with something that you can't kill that can go faster than you. And then of course we did the uh, centipede bottom, yeah. which I have this particular phobia of centipedes. like. The fact that you took something that is such a fear <laughs> and me, put it yeah. front and center, honestly, like it's yeah. commendable. I watched this video like a week ago where this, this dude takes a giant centipede and lets it bite him on the arm. Why would you do that to your? I don't know. I almost passed out like watching this. Video. <laughs> so I, uh, centipedes terrify me, and so I thought the bottom of this thing just has to be sideways centipede legs that are made out of metal, and they just grind you up when it catches you. Mm -hmm. And then God, the final looks so good piece too. of the um, both of these things the with the updated lighting looks really so good. To put a super bright light. Very on it interesting. That would... um... I guess this makes sense, right? I was always like, oh, it's interesting the Traveler is still there, but I guess these are supposed to be glimpses in time. Like the other exotic missions are when, like snapshots of when they came out. So it makes sense that these would be too. Shine actually. as a shadow caster across Although, your, like. If Eris, if Eris is commenting on Zir on Whisper, that one has to be updated. That's gotta be present. This one, is in the past though, right? Past your body so you can see your own shadow as you're trying to get away. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like a lot of it was inspired by the anxiety that I feel and I think- uh, Do you think they added rally flags? We need more of this guy, I love him. Yeah, he's awesome. I Every week, like every guest they've had, phenomenal. Phenomenal. They, they've all done an excellent job. Folks on the team also felt when we talked about like, the trope of a subway that's coming around the corner. Right. Right. Do you just, see that it's finite, yeah. just clock running out it's in front coming. of you? Yep. Yeah. You see the light coming, and then you see the thing. Yeah. 
And so that really God, I'm so excited uh, for this. Oh, a break. I didn't even see that the first time. As freaky as this time, no Indiana Jones laying down on the tracks, hoping for the best here. Yeah, no. Not a chance, yeah, no. no. <laughs> yeah, look, the traveler's so up, broken, honestly. too. Uh, so also, we're, we found ourselves now. We're in the beginning stages here of the whisper we can see on screen. Um, Willie, we kind of touched on this briefly over the course of, uh, of the whisper, uh, but can you tell us a little bit about what it was like sort of reinventing these combat spaces and these encounters for Guardians in a modern sandbox, especially those that are going to have the brave arsenal available to them? Yeah, so uh, just sick. now you saw a brig in this encounter, uh, which there wasn't one before. Um, I completely I missed that when I was watching There's it. the desire to keep the, the soul of the activity, which is that, oh, there's time pressure um, on me to finish this activity quickly, and also I'm uh, going up against powerful enemies that are trying to stop me from doing that. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the combat still felt challenging, oh. even in today's oh. sandbox. So we added some new combatants yeah. to the brig. Um, and we also just increased the number of combatants, period, yeah. um, so that players had more to do with their <laughs> more diverse and deadly tools. Yeah. <clears throat> Guardians have excited. plenty of those available to them. Uh, when you were developing these combat spaces as Yo, what's up, well, were there any moments this, where you really thought yourself, like, right, this is it. Like, uh, we really centered in on what was the, great about The Traveler this. made a, a copy of the tower in the Pale Heart. It's mission originally, it's not but this is going to be tower, appropriately right? challenging for today's Guardians. Yeah, I think the when we when we play tested it and uh, you know we had everybody load up with uh, their like new maneuverability tools, their swords, their grapples mm -hmm. uh, to go through the activity, and then we were expecting that like oh people are gonna breeze through this like it's nothing like the original twenty One minute timer has to uh, become something else, but really all of that translated over pretty well. Like the individual sections are uh, self-contained enough that like you can't. Uh, bypass too many things by just using one new tool. So, I mean, I'll let this guy talk his shit, <laughs> but I give it two hours after the launch of this mission, someone will have found an oob that lets you go from the beginning to the end. I guarantee that. There's literally no way that's not going to happen. Sure. Um, the whole thing sort of <laughs> still... And, and you, will, you will be able to well skate or or he rises, uh, or eager edge, or Icarus, that any call or grapple, or uh, anything, all the way to the end. I I guarantee it. Felt like zero hour. Yeah. Even with your new toolbox. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Even even with, uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump forward here a little bit as well, using our dev tools to take a look at Trevor. I tweeted about this. There's, they just cheat live on stream. Well, so for the folks out there what that is wanna this? reinstill that fear in themselves, now's a brief chance to check it out. Uh, also too, is we're in a world where, you know, there's oh, strand grapples, you know there's shatter skating. Uh, when it came to kind of redesigning these activities, or they even making- death walls up, yeah. That just like every other activity that you can skip right to the end. Just like presage, which you can complete in two minutes. You know, it's like they don't put death walls up though. That's just how it works. I guess alterations more appropriately on these activities. Um, you know, with one like Trevor, for example, what was the challenge that you kind of had to overcome with those new movement tools in addition to the combat tools that players Interesting have? Interesting, boys, you can. Yeah, I guess uh, philosophically, I want to make sure that if people were specking into being highly maneuverable, then I honor that choice and say, yeah. And they very deliberately skipped that section. They must have changed stuff inside those hallways. Yeah, you're highly maneuverable. Like maybe you're in this hallway with Trevor. Uh, I don't or want they just to be ground to up Trevor. by these centipede legs, <laughs> so I'm going to sword skate through this so that I can have a little bit of speed on Trevor. Um, but like, you know, you still can't invalidate the challenge entirely. Trevor will still kill you if you mistime those. Mm. So they're just like different expressions of how you want to tackle these challenges, and none of those expressions like fully throw these challenges out the window. Yeah, God, this actually, so something happy, too dude. that I'm seeing pop up in chat here uh, is the mention of the timer. So for starters, there's also, this is normal difficulty, yeah. and there's also a legend, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about like any updates to the timers in these yeah. missions as well? So, uh, and Willie, feel free to have him correct me if I'm wrong, but on normal, it's 40 minutes, because we want to give players a little bit extra time, especially sure. if you're new, you want this to be accessible. Oh, while get in. imagine if they made Zol the boss! What if you get to the end of Whisper and it's just the fucking, uh, Will of Thousands boss fight, dude? Oh. My. Goodness.
Oh, I don't- I want to tweet that, dude, but I don't want to get everyone excited. That's the greatest fucking idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, no! Oh, what if they do that? Oh, I so hope- oh, they gave him new voice lines. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. That is the unbelievable, like, that is massive amounts of copium. It's not even close. Oh. That's the greatest idea I've ever heard. Isn't Zol dead? Zol is Whisper, so not really. Oh my god, if that happens, dude, I'm gonna fucking freak out. There's no way. There's no way. They literally, they hyped up. They're like... He literally says, I'm so excited for people to see the new boss fight. He literally says that. Where could they wiggle around? I mean, they could just change the room. They literally tease the boss fight, man. They give him new voice lines. They do that like. Oh. Oh. there and get the the, the experience but please a lot oh of our no, please. Of, uh, like i'm gonna clip this okay it is 6 42 p.m on april 3rd <laughs> just in case it's right just in case it's right content is secret uh, in the legend version which has a 20 minute timer yes right? yep just like, okay perfect all right thank you chat uh, oh, in addition to, you oh know, these... and they could add the fucking, they could add the fallen guy from Niobe Labs to this. No, wait, isn't that the boss fight? Who's the boss in this? Is it the Niobe guy? That's already who it is, isn't it? Eric, no, uh, zero hour boss name. <laughs> Shit, I just got so excited. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. No, it's not. Uh, wait, what the fuck? Cyrix. Yeah! No, it is Cyrix. It is Cyrix in Zero Hour. They escape. Yeah, it is the same person. Well, yeah, what if they make it Aramis? What if we finally kill Aramis? Well, I don't think so. Because So the difference, though, is, is Zero Hour seems to be trapped in the past. But Whisper, we're talking to Aris. There's, like, new, like, a lot of changes that we can see. I think Whisper is supposed to be updated to be present, but Zero Hour is still us experiencing the past. These other updates you've made. Yeah, it used to look, I'm looking at it right here. The Fandom Destiny Wiki says, in the boss fight of Zero Hour, you encounter Cyrix, loyal to Aramis. That is the exact person you fight in Niobe Labs. I can't believe Aramis has been teased since zero hour, by the way, what the fuck? And then she was that big of a letdown. <laughs> hey, are there anything or any any changes you've made in particular that you're excited about that you're comfortable talking about it here? Or is it just a, you want players to dive in and find out? Cyrix is not equal to civics. Yeah. Oh, bro, if one fucking letter different, are you serious? You cannot do that, Bungie. That's illegal. Those are the same people. I do not care. Yeah, the, so the whole secret setup for Zero Hour is different. Um, so, you know, previously we had key cards. Those have been replaced by another secret system that you'll just have to... Wait, what? Whole secret setup? In addition to, you know, these, these other updates you've made, are there anything or any, any changes you've made in particular that you're excited about that you're comfortable talking about it here? Or is it just a, you want players to dive in and find out for themselves? Yeah, the, so the whole secret setup for Zero Hour is different. Um, so, you know, previously we had key cards. Those have been replaced by another secret system that you'll just have to... Key cards? What? Oh, the configurations. Oh, yeah. Oh, so they are changing the puzzles then. Find out more about for Perfect. yourself. Excellent. And you know, I'm also proud of the boss fight in this. That's activity. right. Yeah, we'll hold that one close to the vest. Players will have a chance mm -hmm. to see. 
Bro, it's fucking Aramis. Oh my god, it's gonna be a giant wormy boy and an Aramis. Do oh that on their own and see oh Willie's hard work uh, in person very soon. Oh uh, now, God. as we mentioned at the top of the show as well, there's going to be craftable versions of these exotics. Uh, the configuration puzzle was not necessarily a giant nightmare. It was just like figuring it out. There was no rhyme or reason. It was like uh, there would be certain combinations they would show you. Think of like a clock. And then they would just correspond to a random dial. And there were like 50 dials. And so the community just had to like brute force it. And then once we figured out what dial corresponded to what code, then it's easy every time. It's just very time consuming. Um, but it, it was, there was no rhyme or reason for why it, the, at least as far as I remember, for why anything was anything. So we're gonna check them out. But there was one more example uh, that I wanted to ask you about, Rob, in particular. Uh, there was some discussion briefly about the acronym that is Trevor. Can you tell us what that stands for? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, but yeah. I, had to, I had to open my phone because it's like impossible to remember this. <laughs> it, we, got, we all have our yeah. notes. Yeah, it's part of the game. <clears throat> so, yeah. So early on, the team, we re, we, re, we just realized we had to figure out an acronym for this because we loved the name Trevor because it was paradoxical. Mm -hmm. I went to school with a kid named Trevor who was the nicest kid in the entire school, <laughs> just nice to everybody to yeah. fault, right? So I was thought, my friend. We went to grad school together. His name is Trevor, and he was not the nicest guy in the world. He's he's an asshole. So, like Trevor is the nicest out. It name. checks out. And so paradoxically, here's this evil thing named Trevor, and we thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but Sorry. once we alphanumericized, is that a word? <laughs> yeah. Once we made that, we had to come up with the acronym. So the one that I had was tracking robotic three vectored reducer. Because <laughs> it reduces, right, Tom? It's like it reduces you. Yeah. Uh, but that was our internal acronym yeah and so when we went to guardian con and did we did like a, a fly through or like a walk through yeah um and so we uh, the community team uh thought that we should let the fans of guardian con yeah. decide what the actual acronym for trevor was and so we had like That's the five different examples and my tracking robotic was in there oh right? yeah That's one of the things i was like please pick <clears throat> mine please pick mine yeah and so at the end <clears throat> what they decided on and they decided by loud applause and, and it was like very obvious uh, that this is what they wanted. the committee had oh yeah it's like very obvious yeah what they decided on was tame, relaxed, triple vac roommate. <laughs> so that's the official name for Trevor. That's it. It's yeah, codified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very much <laughs> to, the gen the, to the denizens of GCX. Thank you very much for your hard work and letting us know uh, exactly what yeah. Trevor should be called. That's, that's really cool. I wish I'd been there for that. Uh, nice. Okay, now we're taking a quick look uh, at the craftable exotics as well. We're going to go ahead and start with Whisper of the Worm. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about what you know players who are kind of going to go ahead and facilitate their own place style or want to build a whisper all to their own what are they gonna to have to look forward to with all this yeah even before we get into the, the crafting like I, like I've got my notes here from Chris Proctor so you're the I'm man himself grow. yeah he's right. sitting on my shoulder Sorry. helping me out here um, and we wanted to retain the, the fantasy of both these weapons of both of whisper and I think whisper is about and, to be and, you know whisper is about, already a really good decision weapon where you're in the I, I feel like whisper is like, about if you it, land your against or, certain bosses it's gonna be crazy rewarded and you can sustain a ton of damage on a, on a boss or enemies with a large critical area ogres will be felled o ogres will be felled servitors stand oh no don't chance. say a chance yeah <laughs> um and then with outbreak it's the fantasy is all about spreading this the plague of siva nanites certainly um, can't wait to only use it on orcs i i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a bet that whisper is gonna be goaded on one of the encounters in the final shape it's been so long since we've had a boss fight that's like yeah, snipers are pretty good against it, you know? I I bet Whisper I bet there's just a ridiculously long damage phase in one of the the one of the witness encounters or something, and I bet Whisper is the goat. And we'll be able to get to that in a minute, but so I think we're looking at Whisper right now. Yeah, so specifically with Whisper um, and and Outbreak, for both of them with both these crafted weapons, they'll both have a, a craftable barrel, uh, magazine, traits, and stock options. Um, the barrel and magazine options will let you like really push the stats around. Mm -hmm. um, like so, Ooh, you'll be able to have like a max stability whisper if you want. Yeah. Um, which was like you know really advantageous for a weapon that's about this like hitting repeated critical hits. Certainly. Uh, in an area, um, and then specifically for the perks on whisper and the, both the perks on whisper and outbreak are things that by engaging in our secrets week over week and and both of these exotic missions. I'm so uh, excited, man. Um, Woo. And Whisper, it starts off with Mulligan, 
which is the, the that's classic good. That's good point, boys. You can make sure shots they get refunded. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, upgrade it, you can get field prep, which will give you more shots, which equals more damage. Yeah. Uh, and then there's no distractions. Field prep is the, is the, you... is the easiest pick ever. Field prep, prep here. Uh, it's going up to, what, 24 shots. Field prep's usually 10% in snipers. Let me check, let me check. What's a sniper? Uh, Supremacy. Does that get field prep? Oh, fuck. Uh, long Shadow definitely had field prep. I remember because my Long Shadow had field prep. Uh, 50%. Oh, well, never mind. Passively grants 30 to the inventory size stat, stat which is 50% more than one reserve armor mod. Um, Wobby! <laughs> I don't know what that means! <laughs> yeah, you know, keep uh, under, or under Hoon. Fire that seems like something Hoon would know, too. It'll, it'll go from 24. It'll probably go to, like, 26. Well, 24 with no reserves. That means it's probably, what, fucking 30 with reserves? So 33? 32? 33? Is that what we're saying? Because reserve mods are usually two, right? Are they more for snipers? Oh my god, we might have over thirty shots with this thing. And there's also, and then that's not even including like fucking. Oh my god, so, you're so many shots. Action, which is for more forgiving reloads. So you're literally never gonna have to stop shooting. I think a lot of options for players of different play styles and different skill levels Perfect. there. Yeah. Um, and then just the kind of the cherry on top there with Whisper is that it's getting a reserves bump. So it's going to go from That's right. 18 uh, in reserve to 24 in reserve. Uh, so you're going to have a ton of ammo this to, is gonna be to crazy. make it a sustained damage monster, yeah. uh, which is, is, is super exciting. Yeah, so, white nail refunds, so let's say you get 33 shots. You're going to be able to fire 44 times. <laughs> what the fuck? Just like myself, who never missed a shot. We'll have even more. Why are you guys laughing? Why are you? <laughs> I mean, at worst case scenario, it's 30 shots, 40 shots if you hit everything. 40 Whisper of the War shots, what? What? Uh, what do you think and or hope Pantheon will be? I mean, just a boss rush mode, pretty standard across oh, the, uh, different funny? games, you know? Uh, no, that's really exciting. We also, so we have Whisper of the Worm yep. uh, in addition to Outbreak Perfected now joining yep. the pool of craftable exotic weapons. Uh, let's take a quick look at Outbreak as well while we're here hanging out in the Enclave. Um, Tom, kind of, you know, second verse, same as the first, same question. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the perks and updates that players will have available to them with uh, their options to craft out Break Perfected? Yep, and so in addition to barrels and mags, it has uh, its, its classic outlaw perk is back. So you get your fast reloads on final blows, which works which really well about yeah. without break. It's all about also landing precision. I hits. think this it's is rapid hit, either, easy, uh, right? Spawn is that nanites. What, is that what we're thinking here? Spawn nanites and spread that SIVA energy yeah. around. Spread the plague. Spread the plague. Um, and then the, the second one, though, that we've at, we're added here is rapid hit, which plays right into that. So like you, sure. you land your precision shots, you get more stability, you get faster reloads. Uh, then another new one is rewind. Uh, re uh, rewind, rewind wounds. Hard for me to say. Fast, yeah. We think rewind wounds over kit over rapid hit. Yeah, <laughs> try it out. Yeah, uh, which refills your reserves from uh, it, to minimize your reload. So like, if you're hitting shots, you're just gonna keep getting more ammo, which yeah. is really like, kind of interesting. For uh, rapid hit, you know, the reload's cool. I'm more worried about the stability. I think is way cooler. Um. A perpetual motion machine? No, perpetual yeah. death machine. So yeah, I was like, do you want? Yeah, if you want the, the nanites proc, we want. Did my internet die? What the fuck is happening? Hello? Are we good? Are we back? What the bruh? Bungie? Oh, I say Bungie, but that definitely was actually not Bungie. Uh, sorry, just checking something real quick. All right, we're back. I don't know what the fuck that was. Those are you just want to keep shooting. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a head seeker, which I think maybe for PVP or for certain for certain play styles where like you're, you're less you know focused on your critical shots. That's that's something to think about as well. Right. Um, in terms of catalysts. Um, oh, nice proc. You... The head seeker. 
then for PvP, you that'll have be them. busted. Yeah. You're golden. You can craft those. If you don't, you play the Legend version of Whisper and Zero Hour, and you'll have a chance to get them. Very cool. So that's still in there. And then, as I mentioned, for unlocking these these new intrinsic perks that you can slot in, yeah. it'll be like a three-week uh, mini quest line that rolls into the secrets for each of these. And Whisper is coming at launch with End of Light. Exciting. And Zero Hour is coming in May. Perfect. Okay. So give you a so chance excited. to go ahead and sink your teeth into zero hour for a while before you go ahead and change your attention and start so unlocking excited. another another uh, one of the, the storied exotics of old. Yeah. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that there are more than just the craftable weapons available as rewards in these missions. There's some tried and true ships. Now, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but as someone who still to this day wears a thousand wings. You and me. Yeah, yeah like yeah. We, we we know the feeling of getting that ship and finally this is having what I'm that most I was there for. moment. Uh, the ships are making a return as well, isn't that correct? Yeah. Okay, so for, for both Whisper and for Zero Hour, um, they're, they're coming back. Is it the exact same ship, or are there going to be changes on them? No, these are actually new assets, right? They're, they're new ships, so yeah. they won't be the same. They won't, they won't sit in the same spot in your inventory. Hmm. And they are updated to look really cool and new, and I think they're exciting, especially the, we took the old scrap drifter ship that yeah. was, I think... Uh, not really loved particularly by the community because <laughs> yeah. it was it was literally scrapped together from spare parts to right. get built, and so we did a really nice pass on that. So it um, it's inspired by the look of Outbreak Perfected, and I, I think it looks great. I think the community is going to a thousand wings. Uh, it's got a new design, uh, so you'll still have your old thousand wings, mm -hmm. and. Dude. If you have that Dude. equipped, players are going to know that you're OG and that mm -hmm. you got it back in the day. Oh yeah. And the new one is going to look like the new one, so there won't be any mistaking the old one for the new one. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So for the players who want to go ahead and continue to build up their collections, yeah. there's a chance to go ahead and dive back in. Yeah. Maybe they weren't there originally, but they yeah. want to go ahead and join the Thousand Wings Club to a degree. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> so there'll be a chance to go ahead and unlock those, uh, unlock those as well. Um, Excellent. Well, I think we are actually about at the point of the show where we're going to go ahead and get ready to rotate over to the PvP map pack. But for starters, let's go ahead and make sure we thank our incredible team of playtesters here uh, going ahead and showing off the missions for us. Ashley, Peyton, and Michael, uh, thank you all so much. A very much there we go. We're getting some waves from the backstage. Uh, <clears throat> thank you all so much for the time. And of course, uh, Willie, I think this is unfortunately the time. Now we bid you adieu to go ahead and transition into thank the, uh, the PvP map. Thanks for having me. See you soon. Awesome. Willie, thank you so much. All right, we are now uh, joined by another member of the Bungie development team, a staff artist here who has helped made many of the PvP maps that you've also known and loved, the one and only Mr. Cooley Callahan. Cooley, welcome to the show, man. Guys. How's it going? <clears throat> Good to see you. Thanks for having me Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's been so long. All three of them uh, absolutely yeah, pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and skip to where they start showing off the maps. They all three look so good. It, visually... Oh, what have I done? What We're have I done? On in. Uh, all right, we got the first of three maps to go ahead and show off. This is the, uh, we, have, we have one on Europa, one on Neomuna, and then one on one of the pyramid ships in Essence, I believe is That's the name right. of the uh, I didn't stream yesterday because it was my last chance to play hockey for a couple months, so I wanted to go play hockey, so I did. Uh, so this is the first one. This well, is here, here on Europa. Uh, Cooley, can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here today or where we are? Yes, so this map is called Eventide Labs, and this is a long forgotten human colony research outpost on Europa. Five um, minutes left. And uh, it, it just so happens that Aramis has chosen this location as a refueling station for her catch. So here you'll see, um, you know, perched just above the horizon. Let's go blow Aramis in, up. In the, in the sky box with- Aramis needs to die. I'm so sick of Aramis. Um, we have a servitor over here that's um, hooked up to the catch to provide that ether that the elixir need. Um, and so we really wanted to situate the maps in the universe and yeah, look people you know, keep saying that it looks super similar deep destiny to lore. the thieves um, den but yeah we definitely have uh, it's not uh, really that uh, unique of a structure here, though. you know what i set mean amongst the also, is there a tunnel uh, right here human also that was like uh, oh is there you know ice encrusted right, kind of similar to these structures of the past which has <laughs> been a really fun um, environment to work on we definitely want to bring in as many new palettes as possible because you know there's so much great um, environment art content and the palettes are, are really cool and we want to we want to use those in in pvp wherever we can just to you know no I'll keep Aramis alive uh she's dope and could be a dope ally i'm so sick of enemy to ally bullshit i say we catch Aramis, we execute her public execution middle of the street i'm so sick of it I'm so I, I just I, it's a trope that's been overdone and Aramis had like four chances to do her job and she fucked up every time. Fuck Aramis. 
the different palettes have different character that yeah. leads to different gameplay spaces. Uh, also, you know, when it comes to kind of finding these maps to place in the world, Rob, uh, you know, I've been kind of looking at through these through an artistic lens. Uh, what were some of the challenges or even Pretty adding small. I was going to say, this, is a, this room is really wide open, but I guess that's probably here. a spawn point. We wanted to make sure that we had three distinctly different places and places that players haven't seen a bunch of times. Wait, For the stream died again? It looks fine on my end. Are you serious? It's literally zero dropped frames. This is fucking YouTube is sabotaging me. YouTube. Do your fucking job, YouTube. Unfortunately, we had these. Do your job. Uh, available to us and... I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at it again now. I mean, I, I'm not getting sick of looking at this. The team does such a good job. It's gorgeous. This is, I mean, one of the cool things is just how purposeful everything feels in the world. You know, yeah. like the art team always pushes it so far where it really feels like you're walking into a truly recently defunct, mm -hmm. you know, human colony or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and the frozen world of Europa, I mean, they all, they all have their advantages for, for PvP. Let but me know when uh, Icebreaker comes back. I do not think Icebreaker will ever come back. Icebreaker is truly like sandbox breaking in a, in a very bad way. Uh, the the frozen ice walls of Europa are just perfect for yeah. multiplayer, and I'm sure Cooley's yeah, going to talk about this. Yeah, all three maps bunch. visually. Yeah, look actually, incredible. also to Cooley, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, uh, you know, I as as people who have heard me talk too much about Destiny, it, this is actually know. a tiny map. I didn't realize it at first. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny map. Oh. Dead Man's Tale and I get along a lot. Uh, can you tell us a little bit maybe about some of the sight lines or opportunities that I'll have to maybe rack up some additional kills as I dive into this map the first time? Totally, totally. If, if long range is your thing, um, this spot out he's, here is definitely- He's literally cheating on stream, by the way. What is this? I'll leave the place for you. Um, I don't know, it seems pretty average to me, maybe even too big. That is uh, the biggest self-report I've ever heard in my entire life. There's one spawn that happens uh, for uh, one team over by C. No, and I mean it's a, it's a, a, it's like a two lane map. It's pretty small. And so in these competitive modes, I guess it's three lane if you, but it's literally like, it's pretty small, dude. If you've got an objective out here, this sight line is really important to lock down. So this is the like, this is a spot where you're gonna have two teams poking uh, and peeking each other, um, and then you know That's rushing fair. over you're here fair. to try That's to fair. get to this this zone and lock it down and yeah. um, if you're you know rolling with that that long range kit you can hang back yeah and with all three zones like that this down. this might actually be the smallest map in the game this is definitely smaller than endless on this airspace here so that is endless the smallest map in the game right now you can provide cover and, and maybe support your team from being uh, harassed down on this point yeah this map is tiny this and then fantastic. we also have sort of this uh, the sight line in the middle, which will be pretty fun. It's definitely going to be a race to um, for each player uh, or each team to. Kind I don't know how of this will this play with sixes. And, and lock down the, this. I don't. Sort of, uh, so I know all of these were designed for three v threes. I don't think you can play sixes on this map, dude. I think you will be spawn camped to fucking hell and back. Portal here to ensure that you can uh, push into this space and kind of control the middle, but. Um, as you can see, there's... Anomaly is not smaller than this map. Oh, well, there's two... You know, lots of ways for players to come... There's a lot of verticality in this map, so that might, like, playable space, though, although Anomaly has a lot of... I mean, Anomaly is not even close to the smallest map, though. Endless Veil is definitely smaller than Anomaly, right? I'm in flank, so if you're holding the space, you'll Surely. really not want to be here for too long unless you've got the support to do it yeah um, make sure you throw those grenade grenades right off of the rip basically mm -hmm. when you're coming out of spawn to try and yep conquer that territory nah, this it? is smaller than anomaly dude for sure for sure is there any point look i mean it's the easy the easiest way to tell right do i have destiny open Right, this isn't the best measurement in the world. No, and this is definitely smaller than Anomaly. What? Anomaly's center is pretty big. It's like most of the, the space of Anomaly is in that center room. And then everything else is kind of small. One second, 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 one second. What I'm curious about is if I go to the very middle of the map, if I go to a point where I'm equidistant from all flags, how far? I mean, that's not the best measurement in the world, but it's a measurement. You know what I mean? 
Oh, Endless is not bigger, man. I, maybe, maybe like on a technicality, Endless is bigger if you count like the spawns. But the play, the active playable space in Endless Vale is definitely smaller than Anomaly, for sure. For sure. Like how big Anomaly feel? Anomaly feels bigger than Endless IMO. One second. So I now I'm now I'm curious. So if I go to control and then I go to anomaly. So I just want to see when I'm in when I'm equidistant from all three flags, how far are they from me? I'm, I'm so confused. There's no way. Like, I've played on all of these maps a hundred times. There's no way Endless Veil is bigger than Anomaly, dude. Oh, wow. All right, so it's gonna be hard to do because B's in the center, but if I go equidistant from A and C. It's right at 50. It's like 48. And then if I go as, I should still be equidistant here. And the furthest I can get, it's like 66, 48 to 66. This is the most hand wavy bullshit, meaning nothing measurement I've ever done in my entire life, but I'm interested, so I don't care, okay? Endless fail. I guess what I could do is just go the furthest I could go from a single because the fucking the flag is usually in spawn so I can just go as far back from the flag as I possibly can and that's your measurement of the map that would have been a lot smarter than what I'm doing but <laughs> that's what I'm saying that's what I'm saying and this fails like playable space where people actually are has got to be smaller than than anomaly it has got to be anomaly circular so people are always playing on the outside of that map you barely ever use the spawns in endless fail especially on um especially on the other side oh i mean come on like already dude already Okay, equidistant here. We are 48. I mean, this is, they're closer into the map, so barely, uh, this is the worst measurement I've ever done in my entire fucking life. I'm sorry. This doesn't mean anything. Ah, dude, Anomaly is definitely bigger than this, man. You guys are crazy. No way, no way. I mean, like, if you count this, it might... <sighs> but no one plays past this. I have no fucking idea what to believe anymore. What map is larger? How do you spell anomaly? So that's an A, right? An Anomaly. Anomaly. Oh, a no, a no, a alley, a no alley. There you go. All right. Everyone, go vote. Everyone, go vote. I don't even know what to believe. My entire life's a fucking lie right now. Best you can. I would have said I like. Snap reaction anomaly is a lot bigger, especially if you count like where people usually are on that map. Anomaly plays bigger than endless fail. Yeah, one of the thing I love about these ice caves is um, 
you know, it provides a lot of opportunity for grenades. I, like, trip I think this is really interesting because this map is definitely smaller. Uh, but it's got so many paths and there's up and downs and stuff. Lines and to bounce things off of the, the back of the, of the walls and the, the shapes here are just really fun to, to play with. All right, so this is uh, one of three maps. Let's go ahead and prepare to go ahead and move on to the next one here really quickly. We've got, uh, coming up next, Neomuna uh, as well. So I'm finding excited a place, for this you know, one. This Neomuna, one looks lit. That makes sense for PvP probably seems pretty natural, honestly, given just like how rich and vibrant and exciting of a place it is. Uh, what was it like, you know, even starting from an artistic standpoint on this map, Rob? This was a really exciting map for the team. Um, it's a shopping slash entertainment center for the Exos on Neomuna. And, yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot of really fun. And always clearly uh, bigger. That's what I'm saying, dude. And the spaces have a lot of character to them. There's a lot of recognizable things, um, you know, human scale things that, you know, look. Anomaly has more playable space, but it might be technically smaller. That is, yeah, a, I think that's a safe bet. Like I said, because it's like, Endless, if you count the spawns, might be bigger, but you never play in the spawns on Endless, so it's like... Relatable, and yeah. we don't always get that in, in all of our palettes, and so um, this is also an opportunity for us to have a really clean architectural mm. map that has a lot of, um, you know, crisp edges and, um, you know, very uh, flat floors, so all of the... Definitely the more competitive players and the sort of the more PvP uh, diehards, um, they really take to this map and it's an instant hit. Um, people are, you know, just right away pleased Cheating. with Live know, on stream. how readable the map is. Ridiculous. It's one of those maps that you play a couple times and you're, you you get it, like you understand that. I don't really it's like the small this, doors. The center atrium room that- But also like, really look how much- kind of, You know, has this- big pit in the middle and okay that i didn't even notice that the first time um oof and yeah um there's this area down here which is uh where a lot of objectives spawn and there's um some special ammo down here but then there's also um this place over here where the, the heavy ammo spawns yep. and you know players will this map is going to be so intense just pop up here to do a downstairs quick will hit. not be playable he he said it was a pit and, and maybe like try to get a a cheeky kill on somebody who's maybe running yeah, um, this is the cover, smallest map. But, yeah. I don't think any of these maps will be playable on sixes. You can't hang out here for very long because you've got so many different angles at which you can um, get shot from. But that's... I that's didn't even notice like it. There's special ammo on That the balance of what I was talking about before. Like, we, we want to provide that, but we want to make sure that um, it's not too powerful or, um, you know... It's, it's If you play sixes on a map like this, you're, you are getting spawn camped or you are spawn camping the entire time. These aren't Nuketown sizes. This is half of Nuketown size. Still, it's a risk reward, right? You're making a trade-off and, um, you know, the, the players who are using and, and the map well... And we move well, three times as fast as Call of Duty. Will, um, you know, be able to use it to their... Advantage. I don't I don't think yeah. that's a bad thing. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm just Actually, saying... Actually, like, also I didn't, to kind of focus on the readability. I, was, I watched this review on my phone on my lunch break. So I was like, I, I wasn't really paying attention, but now that I'm paying attention, it's like, wow, uh, I remember these are overhearing really small some maps. discussions with, with you designers talking about the clean zone in PVP. Can okay. you tell us a little bit about what that is and how it kind of helped inform the design of this map? Yeah, definitely. I think oh, the, the, the clean zone is something that, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of developers uh, really use to um, sort of create this This space seems like it has a lot of outer space uh, though. The player to, pop a right? lot more so than the other map the other map seemed like the center was the focus this one seems this one looks a lot more like anomaly where it looks like there's probably going to be a lot going on on the outside environment and so for us it's about where the player's head height is and this map is you know just one of the examples of how it, it can really provide for a good pvp experience to um, yeah, this looks kind of big actually sort of mark on the wall the outside of this map is a lot bigger than the to, last to reside one in. yeah um, so they jump around and, and strand suspend you in the air and you're just left there cursing the heavens for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Maybe I'm speaking on my own behalf. Uh, <laughs> That's a cool angle too. Fantastic. Yeah, this is, I will say, one of the maps that having done a little bit of play testing myself, um, I still have to give you credit for perhaps one of the most diabolical heavy weapon spawns, uh, or heavy ammo <laughs> spawns rather I should see, uh, in any PvP map. Like the sheer amount of risk reward that goes into just making your way safely, or so you think, out to that particular territory. Right. Um, you know, as you guys were even building that balance in of, of these consumables on the map, Cooley, what this was it like sort of, of having asylum? that, that Maybe aesthetic, but but playable space, I'm Process, definitely not evolve getting or, that. Or grow. Yeah, 
Um, you know, typically when we start laying out a map, we, we just kind of start with control because it's a, it's a good base point. It's, it requires three you know, very well-defined combat pockets oh, that have an objective in them. Um, but then from there, we start mapping out the other objectives that might exist on a map, like the heavy ammo point. And I think we've kind of gravitated more toward having special ammo live next to some of the other objectives on the map, so you're not constantly having to make a choice of where There's some verticality there, too. They um, seem to really play with that. I like that. We, we kind of map those things out, and um, it's, it's I like sort the of a verticality. formula. There's, there's definitely oh, he left his a, body. Uh, Man transcended. Sort of a order of operations, so to speak, of... You start with no, these you can't. big strokes. You, there's no um, way you can ride You go to elevators. the next stage and, and start making sure that you've got, you know, space and combat pockets for, you know, like where would they go? or, you know, some some other game modes and um, things just kind of fall into place from there. Yeah, excellent. All right. And we've also got we've got one more map to check out as well uh, for all the fine folks at home. We're going to continue our guided tour and we're going to make our way over to Essence, to one of the pyramid ships, to check I'm excited out the for this final one. PvP I, This is the one I'm the most excited for. Uh, as we're flying in, I, I, gotta, I gotta give you guys credit, like the space that exists inside those pyramid ships that's being terraformed by the Traveler looks just absolutely incredible. But this is the first time you guys have had a chance to really flex your muscles and build a PvP map out here. Um, you know, Rob, just to start from your perspective as we load in, <clears throat> what was it like developing this, you know, playground for Guardians that's kind of so deep in the enemy's backyard? I think it was really tough. You know, like the, I remember there were quite a few iterations of this map and I know Cooley is going to go into more detail, but like from a high level, it's a, a pretty inherently noisy palette. You know, Cooley was talking about the clean zone. Mm. There's some palettes in the game that are that are just very visually noisy. So the geometry is noisy. They create a lot of shadow and a lot of highlights just yeah. by the geometry itself. And then the textures, the shaders that are on the geometry, those can be noisy. Yeah. And then there's the clutter of the palette. So when you when you have uh, a lot of people are saying that dissonance entropy, and there's just mm -hmm. rubble uh, everywhere. Looks similarly like shaped to around, Emperor's respite, or, or rest, hanging respite, down, which like I do we, not we see often at all. do in okay, Destiny. We have that. to declutter some of like, I, the European dens. That... I liked the Emperor's respite map personally. Dead zone maps, for example, yeah. are highly cluttered. And so this was an example of one of those. Um, fairly entropic, high clutter palettes yeah. that the team had to kind of wrangle into shape. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure Cooley's gonna talk about that process because yeah, it was Yeah, already, you can tell. Yeah. This map is Actually, way yeah, Cooley, bigger. This map is as big as the other two put together. Uh, already, like just looking at this. And you and just start there, you know, taking this space on a pyramid ship and kind of making it suitable for a PVP map. This is was, a sixes map. What was that process like for from your sure. perspective, kind of from more of a design side? Yeah, it's, it's again it, a process of back and forth. Um, you know, we start with Mass Out, and Mass Out is the simplest and cleanest a map will ever be. And, uh, you know, from there we start um, developing the spatial character of, of the map. And one of the things we like to ask ourselves is, what is this place? And even with um, a more abstract palette, like all the like, walls have turned white um, instead of black. Essence ship, um, it looks, it's, uh, the visually it's worth asking that striking. question because we can leverage spatial archetypes that just kind of like naturally resonate with people so um like here we have in this map we have sort of these dueling i love cuts, how they're playing with yeah. dueling, so dueling much ziggurats i think that's and sick inside of them is this artifact or shrine so maybe this is like a maybe this part of the ship is a a collection of mysterious artifacts that the witness has collected um and so we we lean on those things to to give a little bit of rhyme and reason to a space that otherwise is completely abstract um and that that is also really useful for us in terms of we can make any any kind of space we want. Like we're not limited by this. Definitely does not look like but, Emperor's Respite, um, by the way. This, you know, it, can this, be, it can be tough sometimes. This to, gives me to completely original in the vibes. Maps, um, when you don't have things like doors or you know <laughs> like TVs or, or um, you know any sort of you know, human scale architectural pieces that um, kind of clue you in. So yeah. yeah. It's also too is uh, yeah, I remember we were talking a little bit before the show, Rob, even about you know what it was like from a design standpoint and bringing in external testers to try these maps uh -huh. out for the first time. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and kind of as you I think phrased it, discovering your own blind spots? Yeah, well we've done this before for years really, and yeah. we did it again here and it was I think really successful because you know it was two days they ran through these maps when they were still in development. They yeah. weren't too far enough along where we couldn't make some some pivots that we oh, needed to. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. And they found a lot of stuff. I mean, we for this map, for example, we thought it was in a pretty good place. Yeah. 
And, and a lot of things were called out. They didn't pull any punches. They were honest and clear and, and constructive with the feedback. And it yeah. wasn't super easy to hear it all. But sure. you know, when, the, when the team listened to it and we, we took tons of notes, and it was also about, I mean, they gave feedback on, on our sandbox as well. Yeah. But <clears throat> lots and lots of map feedback. It was incredibly useful. And you know, just another lesson in what we don't see. That space is going to yeah. be crazy. You know? yeah. And it's just, it's so valuable to do that. And these, I can't say who they were, but they're very well-known community yeah. players. There's folks in chat, who knows? But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know we, we really were careful about who we brought in because we wanted people that would be very pragmatic. Mm. You know, they weren't interested in their own, you know, YouTube monetization strategy or how, how they particularly make Yeah, content. I agree. They I think I think this will be the worst map for threes, but the best for sixes out of them. Game to be in a great place. It's a beautiful map. To, I'm, I'm really, this is the one I'm most excited for. For the and for Destiny. Absolutely. Right? And so, and they, they were carefully selected that way and great communicators who could articulate the feedback. They could really speak to what they were experiencing and yeah. and what we could do to fix what they were experiencing. Yeah. yeah. And it, man, I'd like, Cooley can, can probably, um, Say what he thinks about it too, but yeah. I was just blown away by yeah. how valuable that was, and uh, we definitely want to keep doing that. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah Cooley, can you tell us a little bit more yeah. about that experience on your side as well? Totally. I mean, it's so fun to like. Those are some of my favorite moments when we can get a bunch of um, you know super fans from the community in and show them work in progress stuff, and they can actually give us real actionable feedback that we take back to the back this to our desks awesome. and talk about it and we you know we we discuss how can we um, you know sort of take their feedback and move forward <laughs> and um, this is this content is for them fair enough here yeah in a big way right like we want we need their approval like we we absolutely you know that's our that's our that's our mark that's our our goal is to um, you know create content that they're going to love playing and that they're excited to play and that their communities are going to get excited to play and and sort of learn together and, to, and build strategies for, um, you know, that's that's the funnest part of the job. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, Cooley on, on your side in general, what are you most excited for for players to experience once this gets out into the world with Into the Light? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see these maps rotate into trials. I'm excited for players to have a totally new trials experience that, you know, is gonna be a, a sort of a an experience of discovery of, of these new spaces and of new strategies and um, for players to also, you know, the, the meta of isn't really formed yet. I mean, like we, we, we sort of know how the map plays, but it's always a, a fun surprise to see gonna be in dangerous. the wild um, just how the map ends up uh, sorting out and, and what people end up doing. And, um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to just watching what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I count myself among the many that are excited to go ahead and dive on in, having more playgrounds oh, the to go ahead and dive on the, in on trials, the, no matter what the case is. Maybe try and go ahead and actually get some more competitive rank. Uh, Cooley, thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through these today. We really appreciate it. Anytime, my pleasure. Excellent. And uh, all right, well, we'll go ahead and use that as a moment to conclude the uh, the quick tour of as well of the PVP maps. Uh, we got a quick question from chat I'm from so Jake Asor asking so about, uh, are we going to get a playlist or mode? It'll be just these new maps during Into the Light. And the answer is yes. When they launch on May 7th, we'll have a 3v3 playlist to go ahead and talk just about these items. Uh, I'd rather let you play just those maps. Rather, we're talking about them today. <laughs> They're all going to be playing them very shortly. Uh, all right. Well, that uh, so far wraps up the first two segments of our show. But we've got, as I mentioned at the top, a few more announcements for you as well. So you may have heard us mention the word Pantheon in the TWID last week, or even on the show here last week potentially as well. We have got a brand new uh, raid oriented, a raid boss gauntlet rather, starting on April 30th. Now there'll be more information about this in an upcoming TWID. You'll have more details to dig into shortly, but you will have the Pantheon coming up where you'll have an opportunity to face group. Okay, so the question. The question here, and I definitely have my opinions on this. It's a boss gauntlet in raids. Do they include bosses that are not in the game? I think no. I think there's no way. I've heard many people say that they think that we're going to get levy bosses, you know, eater bosses, scourge bosses, um crown spire wrath i think no i think that is incredibly cope so i i think it would be awesome 
in a really great sign of in good faith by Bunchy, but I I don't think we're it's going to happen. Ruling raid bosses in a weekly challenge with escalating difficulties and rewards. Now this is a chance for you to go ahead and rally your clan. I think a lot of the reasons people were saying this is, is because there were specific tweets from Bungie yesterday. Um, I don't know if I can pull any of them up. But one of the Bungie devs was like... One of the Bungie devs said something that was like, can't wait for you to see what's inside of this or something. Damn, I thought I retweeted it. I can't find it. I don't know. Or the perfect fire team with fire team finder, if you're able to track them down, to go ahead and track down those exotics. Adept Definitely, weapons, hey, hey, emblems if, if there's a solo solo bull Solo-able. That's a fucked word. If you can solo any of the bosses, my ass is there, by the way. And your hands on. I'm but excited. We have more details for that in the coming weeks. Keep an eye on the TWID, Cosmo, and the community team. Thank you for your hard work putting that together. Was it Ash that said it? Nah, this is the Final Shape stuff, though. I'm talking about the Pantheon. Two. It was in reaction to Sneaky Beaver. I assume it's on this tweet, but I don't see the, I don't see the reply to it. Yeah, I don't see it. But... Anyways. Uh, when you dive on in on uh, on April 9th, uh, actually rather before we get there, I'm sorry, we will have the opportunity to also, you'll have the opportunity to get a title through your course of Into the Light Brave. as well. So if you dive on in, go ahead and unlock all the triumphs associated with the seal, you'll be able to march into the final shape with a brand new title, Brave, as well. So make sure, go ahead and get those those big challenges bit off, so that way you can handle them uh, as early as you possibly can and let the witness know that you're on the way. Uh, and we have three really, really cool things hitting on f April 9th when Into the Light launches. The first one is, if you're a new player, you got a buddy who's just jumping into the game for the first time, and you'd rather not hang out with Shahan and the Cosmodrome, this then is a you great have an opportunity move. to go ahead and just join the front lines. You can skip the New Light campaign, give Shahan maybe a high five on the way out, ask him for a weekly bounty when you're back later, but you have a chance to go ahead and meet up with your friends, head to the Hall of Champions, grab the Gift of great, Thunderlords if you so choose, change. and get right ready for battle along Alongside them. So Great you'll be able to change. go ahead and grab some of these new light kits as well, depending on what your subclass of choice is out of the gate. But your barriers to dive in with your friends have never been lower. There'll be a chance to go ahead and dive on into everything you're seeing within the light here. Uh, also, we have a couple more things. We have some questions in chat about this as well uh, from it's Zepsky and Atlas Live TV. But on 4.9, you'll have the opportunity to also change your, what, the way your character looks. So uh, you'll be able to go ahead and change your hair if you didn't like your haircut, if you want to go ahead and change your face paint, if you want to go ahead and risk it to be one of those guardians who goes helmetless in the tower. I'm not sure if I'm brave enough, but I know many of you are. Your chance will be arriving very soon with Into the Light. Uh, and there will also be an opportunity to change your name. So Guardian4681 out there. With the launch of Into the Light, we're also going to give does you that, one more name change account token. Exist? If you already have yours sitting around, I believe you have two, but our friends Four, in DCS six, will be able to answer that question for you. But you'll have that chance as well once Into the Light launches. That's not now, a real person. Uh, there's a lot, but we also have one more thing. That for is a real person. Uh, next week, we're going to be joining... Oh my God, why would you call this person out? This poor person. Thank you again for a special developer preview of some... Wait, 1388? 1388 4681. Guardian 
Only 16 raids. Eight crotazens? Hi, kitty. What, what can I help you with? Oh, that was really cute. You want to hop up here? Hey. I don't know why they called this person out in particular, but... Gameplay for Destiny 2 The Final Shape. Come here, come here. It'll be uh, here, wherever you're watching live, you'll be able to go ahead and watch it oh, on April 9th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, uh, where you'll get a chance to basically, again, get a look behind the scenes. The developers have been hard at work for some mm -hmm. cool stuff that you are definitely not going to want to miss. And over the course of that show, Twitch drops will be live. So they'll have, there'll be another emblem, what which you can sweet. see here live on the screen, that'll be available uh, after about 15 minutes of view time. Uh, if you haven't gone ahead and also like unlocked I them the emblems that you got everything. as a result so of smart. this show or that we're, we're having available during the Into the Light streams, then you have a chance to go ahead and spend some more time unlocking oh. those as well. Oh. Uh, but uh, oh. that, that does it. Um, for starters, to all of you Guardians out there in chat, thank you oh. so much for taking the time to join us. We're thrilled about what we've been able to show off and thrilled about what the team's been working on for Into the Light. So thank you for taking Okay, I want to do some solo that, stuff. Gonna... But I need to go use the restroom, so I'm gonna let this play for a second. I'm gonna go use the restroom. I'll be. I right was back. really excited about it. And then so, we're and then Tom, we're gonna use so some solo run because so I I we I show up very close. and there's like you know 15 20 people, mm -hmm. and they presented this whole plan, and I had my list all ready to go, and I was gonna wait. I was gonna listen to all the proposal and everything, and then yeah. start giving <laughs> ideas and stuff. And when they finally finished presenting this plan for how to update this thing, I just deleted my list because it was like. <laughs> It was way bigger and way cooler than anything that I'd come up with. Yeah. It was just so neat to see like a fresh take on it. So if you think you know where the chests are, if you think you know where all the secrets are, if you think you know where all the surprises are, yeah. you don't because they're different. All those old guides and all the old walkthroughs, they're gonna have to be remade. Even though I'll just give one away, when you first get in, there's that first secret chest room on the right. Right. The anomaly has taken care of that. It's not there anymore. Anomaly has yeah. taken care of it. So more surprises. <laughs> to the to the Steam guide writers, to the game facts writers, to mm. the folks making their YouTube videos, a revision two is going to be in order sometime soon. Oh yeah. By the sounds of it. Yeah. That's really exciting. Uh, also, too, is is um, you know, are there any other changes that you guys are particularly excited about when it comes to the whisper? We're going to move on to zero hour here in a little bit, but um, you know, before we conclude our journey here, uh, Willie, actually on your side, are there any changes in particular that you're excited about with this this updated version? I'm excited about the way that the boss fight has changed yeah. for this activity. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll leave that to folks to go ahead and discover on their own uh, when it comes to the launch day of, of the Whisper. But uh, <clears throat> yes, this is a first okay. look uh, yeah, for the folks back. out there who are, are looking to go ahead and make sure that they they're ready on day one to go ahead and add another craft exotic into their their collection. Uh, um. Okay. So I have now beaten Solo Explicator six times, Solo Nez four times. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start going for the actual flawless attempts. I'm I'm not. I need to get my explicators more consistent. I'm feeling real good about Nez, though. Like, NorCal, just don't play, dog. Like, I don't even know, man. It's like... I, I, say, I say this all the time. I say this all the time, but there are so many... Uh, there are so many issues with the game and, like, legitimate grievances that I think are, like... They're layups. Why are we bitching about the good stuff? You know what I mean? Like, come on. It's like, you know what I mean? I mean, like, you're obviously free to do whatever you want. I'm, but it's just like, man, what are, what, are, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? I don't know, though. It is what it is. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm excited. It seems like a large part of the community is excited, and that's good for me because I enjoy the game better when uh, more people are hyped and, uh, and and everything like that. So I'm, I'm really excited. My cat is laying down and she's so fucking cute right now. I don't think there's any way for you to see her, but she's very precious. I mean, we always have to see the glass half full, right? I mean, no, not necessarily. You don't even have to do that. Like, I don't think it's hard to classify the entire game as one thing, but there are like objectively still problems with the game and there are very low hanging fruits that you can complain and bitch and moan about all you want. It's fine. I do it too. But it's like, 
complaining about like some of the most like good, unique, genuinely interesting stuff we've had in a very long time. Just it just makes you look silly, man. Like that's all I got. Like, just go complain about the stuff that you should actually be complaining about, I guess. I don't know. I hit that good skip this time. Whee! Oh, never mind. I fucked it up. Never mind. I'm, I'm good again. Okay, so you guys know the rule. If it's left, we clear. If it's right, we wipe. Fuck. Oh. Okay, I didn't hit it. It didn't go, I guess. That's fine. My cat's being too cute. I'm gonna have to kick her out of my room because she's being way too distracting right now. She has this, I don't know if, most of you have probably never seen it, but my cat, she's, com she's completely black, but she has a white, we call it her tuft. She has a white spot right on her tummy. Just like that, right on her tummy. And it is so soft. And every time she lays down, I just want to poke it. Just want to poke it. And then she bites my hand. Because <laughs> she's a brat. Hey, brat. Dude, lab. I mean, that's a good point, dude. I bet art money would give you a replay on the, uh, on the Lost Sectors. So I think the rule is I'm just... I'm, I'm just practicing Explicator and Nezzy and stuff. But if I wipe before second encounter, I think I just run it back. <laughs> Bruh, cat, get the fuck out of my way! Oh my god, this is a mess. Shadow really fucked me up. Thank you so much, Trish, for the 29 months. How you doing? Oh, I was really hoping- oh, this is no good. Oh, this is no good. I'm going to wipe. Oh, Jesus. All right. We, we can we can recover this. Shadow really fucked me up there. That's all I'm saying. I'm, bl I'm blaming my cute cat. We still hit the skip, though. Can you imagine if I would have died right there? <laughs> oh, that's so cute, Andre. Okay, here we go. There we go.
Oh, I should have hit that. That's fine. Where's Nerd at? Oh, that's no good. Please, dude, please. Oh, this is no fucking good. This is very oh I think I think this is a wipe. Um <laughs> Alright, I have one chance to save this. Oh, that fucked it up. Okay. Yo, Vitor, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. Uh this run is over. For sure. Yeah. That fucking sucks, man. I got... When they hide like that, it's so, like... This is what I'm talking about with the first two encounters. It's just, like... It's such a motivation killer. It's like, there's no way I should have wiped there. Yeah, exactly, Boysikin. Oh man, how you doing, Vitor? Hmm? Like I said, I'm just gonna, if I wipe in the first two encounters, I'm just gonna reset. <clears throat> I wanna get I want to I want to play uh, Explicator. That's why I really just want to practice that. Oh, I haven't done any Iron Banner. I just this is the only thing. I look, Iron Banner, I was excited for the Tusk of the Boar, but now that Mount Top's back, like I'll, I will literally never use Tusk of the Boar. So it got power creeps before it even launched. <laughs> But that's how it do be sometimes. Okay. But I think this weekend I'm gonna hit this really hard. I, I my goal is to hopefully have this done by the weekend. <laughs> kind of disagree. Waveframes are still better for ad clears. There are plenty of primaries that do ad clear just fine. It's uh. There are more primaries. I don't know why I use that, by the way. There are more primaries that do ad clear almost as well as waveframes than, than primaries that do single target damage as good as secondaries. I think I just like absolutely butchered the shit out of that. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. But I think single target's a much harder rule to fill, I guess is what I'm trying to say than ad clear. But yeah, also Mount Top, uh, Mount Top Forbearance is going to be the best combo in the game. I completely agree with that. So, yeah, who, who even needs primary? You have two specials that uh, that do opposite things. Broken. 
Why not Tuscan Forbearance? Why would I need to add clear weapons? Please. Alright, come on. Fucking lock in. Oh, that's not good. What? Oh, Jesus. Yo, chill, bro. Bruh? Oh, this is... Shits. Oh, I might have just thrown. All right, I'm clearly not feeling this today. Maybe I won't be restarting anymore. Like, are you serious right now? This is no good. What?
First try. Your teammates suck. True. Tuscan Merciless. Um. Merciless is kind of like a straight boss DPS thing, though. I wouldn't want to waste any of that on, like, a yellow bar. I don't know. I really just think, like, I think just Mountaintop, Ikelos, Mountaintop, Forbearance, Mountaintop, Sunshot, that sort of thing. Depends how good Sunshot... I forget. We've had Sunshot buffed for so long that I don't... I don't even remember what regular Sunshot was like. I think it's still good. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. No, I don't think Recluse is going to be top tier anymore. I kind of feel like Recluse is dead content on, on release, actually. It just doesn't... I don't know. The Master of Arms nerf really kills it. Kind of well that into the light is 90% of what was promised to come back from the DCV. Uh, nothing was promised to come back from the DCV, but also onslaught not coming back. New weapons, I guess you I, you could kind of say that. Never promised, but sure. Um, new crucible maps definitely not promised. Uh, whisper, yeah, whisper and zero hour were teased. Pantheon not promised. I think your 90% is a little wild. A little wild of an estimate, buddy. No, they're adding uh, Zero Hour and Whisper. Uh, Whisper comes Tuesday. Zero Hours. What is it, everyone? It's sometime in May. Thank you, Lab. That's much better. Oh, I, I did not need the Icarus dash there. Oh, I'm gonna fucking die, bro. Jesus fucking Christ. Doing this shit after a work day is the, literally the worst idea I could ever have. But only practicing on weekends is... I'm gonna fucking... I don't wanna talk about it. I hate fucking everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woohoohoohoo. Doing this after a work day is really fucking dumb. Fucking idiot, dumbass, brother. I don't even know if this is possible anymore. 20 seconds? I can do this in 20 seconds, bruh. I cannot do this in 10, though. Fuck, I don't have... Oh.
No way. It's, it's gonna it's gonna knock me out. It's gonna knock me out. It's gonna knock me out. The wall's about to come out. Are we good? Fuck, bro. Where's the fucking champ? Where you at, buddy? Come on, burn out, bro. Thank you. Nice. <sighs> that was really badly angled. Bro, my cat's playing with something, and it's very distracting, Shadow. If you could cut that out. Oh, are you serious?
Oh shit! That was risky as fuck. I should have well skated that. Of mercy on my soul. Bruh, get the fuck out of my way. Get the fuck out of my way. Let's go. Bruh? Okay. How do you find the motivation to keep trying this? I have actually, I've kind of fallen in love with Solo Run. It's it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I'm a Tusk of the Boar Hater now. I like I'll try to get one, but Mountaintops, Mountaintops on top. Tusk of the Boar uh, got got power crept before it ever even had a chance. free because I can't have the negative community sentiment going into the final shape when people like me point out that uh, it's a lot of DCV stuff that's already promised to rerun. Well, okay, you keep saying this, dog, but that's just... I uh, and may Maybe I'm just ignorant to this point, but please, 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 please send me a link or <laughs> anything but... Uh, well, first off, where anything was promised to return, I guess. Um, they did say at one point that the exotic missions uh, might return. I, I believe they used pretty soft language, if I remember correctly, on, on those, but... Um, and it's, I, I guarantee it being free has, uh, very little to do with the negative sentiment and more about getting as many people back playing the game as possible. Um, it's a hype machine. It's a, it's a, it is a marketing move, uh, for sure. hundred percent. They don't fucking care if you complain or not, dog. Twelve pre beyond light. Uh, no. Alrighty. One of the best sound effects in the entire game. Am I gonna die? Sheesh! I thought I was gonna die. I was getting a little palm sweaty mom spaghetti right there, dude. Oh, fat fingered. I'll get this just in case. I think I might, but. <sighs> Explicator is definitely my, it's, it's the thing that holds me up. The most. One four. One four two six. Should have killed him the first time. Fuck, man. I never die right there. Shit. What a stupid fucking death, man. Fuck. Fuck, man. I should have killed him. I should have killed him when I ran past him. I had plenty of time. I fucked up my grenade. Watch, now I'm gonna fucking clear this try. I'm gonna I fucking hate myself. Watch this. 
I kind of want to die real. I don't. I want to die right here, so I don't fucking. If I clear right here, I'm gonna be really pissed. Very, very, actually. Two, four. Two, four, one, five. Four, five. Brother. Dark rights. Oh, sorry, dark lefts. Bruh. Throw, 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 throw. Yeah, I, th I threw that damage face. Holy. Oh, let's go get that heavy brick. One four. One four, one five.
Oh, what the fuck? Brother! White left. Oh, fuck. I hate this encounter so much, man. I hate this encounter so fucking much. It's just so long. There's so much that can go wrong. Explicator doesn't know his fucking... Are you serious? Three, five. No, oh, I'm so dead here. Nope. Three, five, three, five. Brother, leave me alone. Oh my god. White center.
Come on, not one more heavy break? Are you serious? Swung Shadow with triple steps, so the best sniper. No, 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 no. Just do Supremacy or Succession. Long Shadow hasn't been on top for a long time. <sighs> this is tough. This is tough to do after a... After fucking work, man, you gotta have some good sleeps. Some good sleepies to do this shit. I think this weekend I clear this for sure, though. Oh, I'll check it out, Jordan. 1-6... One, uh, one, six, two, four, one, six, two, four. Are you serious, man? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, bro. Ah! Six, four. No, I'm fucking dead. I'm fucking dead, bro. Holy shit. Fucking die. No, you fuck. Let me check Jordan. Oh, it's a, is it a hockey clip? I actually, I, I don't think I can show that on stream. I think I'll get copyrighted if you show a hockey clip on stream. A line brawl to start the game. Oh God, I really, I wanna, I wanna watch that. I wanna watch that. I'm watching that as soon as stream ends. All right. We're, uh... Oh, come on, this is the easiest shit I've ever done in my entire life. Just fucking kill. I've killed this guy six times solo, man. I know what to do. Just fucking get good. That's what I gotta do, man. Six times, man. How much more can you possibly learn and encounter? Three, four. Look at my movement, man. It's so dynamic. It's so fluid. Three, four, two, four. That didn't hit. Double four is my favorite. Let's go.
The index planets have revealed themselves. Oh, please, before he hides. Light right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm literally the greatest Destiny player of all time. Hello? Wow. I am a throwing. I might not even make this before it disappears. I think I made it. Oh my god, this is a mess. This is a mess. What? Oh. Losing that much time is brutal. Damage was actually still all right. One six, I got was supposed to die there. One six, one four. Did I just miss that? Oh my god, I have to go up and punch it! White rights.
kind of cooked there. Yo, thank you for the sub. Hello, we only heavy in places where it shouldn't be. Let's pick up one of these, I guess. Got to be careful here. I don't want to pick up any of this heavy. We want lots of heavy in the middle there. One, five. One, five, three, four. Five, four. Come on, spawn, bro. Dark, uh, right. No, dark, le uh, dark left. Sorry, excuse me. Fuck. Don't use well, don't use well, don't use well, don't use well, don't use well. Okay, easy. Easy, 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 easy. 
literally freest thing I've ever done in my life. Okay. What is, that's like four or five attempts. That was not bad at all. <sighs> Didn't save enough ads there, but whatever. I mean, that was free. I still had, I still had three rockets worth of time anyways, like... Dude, that, I know, oh yeah. Everything, I'm really excited for the new, um... Knocked Loose album. The last two singles, especially Blind and Faith, but the one that they just released last night was pretty good too. Uh, this is a full solo run, yeah. Um, I was flawless until Explicator. I think that was five tries on Explicator. Something like that. Explicator is definitely like the the one I'm I'm the most nervous about or the least confident in, I guess. That was my seventh time killing Explicator. I've killed Nezzy solo four times. I have no idea, boys again. I have zero interest in ever going back into Vault of Glass again, so um I uh I I do not plan on doing solo vog. So I, I have not been paying attention to the strats. Bruh. The hardest part of the solo. Bruh. Bruh. I, it's so weird because when I started this challenge, I loved, so like the first time I cleared solo Explicator, I loved it. The first time I cleared solo Nezzy, I hate it. And now that I've done them both a ton of times, I've completely flipped. Um, solo Nezzy is r actually like real nice. I enjoy doing solo Nezzy. I hate solo Explicator and I don't, it's not bad. I, ju I just get like, I'm just so anxious about it because I know it's my weakest part in the raid by like a lot. So, uh, for Mountaintop, I'll probably go for auto loading holster and, um, uh, 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 it wasn't Vorpal. What did we decide in that second column chat? I don't think it was Vorpal. Maybe it was Vorpal? I don't think it was, though. Oh, it was probably Recom, or fr yeah, Frenzy or Recom. Um, I don't know, it just kind of depends. Frenzy's really good, though. Although we did say, wasn't there like something that was better than Frenzy? I don't fucking remember. Sorry, my mind's a little, uh... <gasps> fucking hell, dude! Jesus Christ! My mind's a little, uh, not... My mind exists in solo Ron mode only right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Recombination can make your shot do a, uh, if you get 10 kills, I think it does, t uh, 20 or sorry. I think it's if you get 10 kills, uh, with other weapons, you get up to two times as much damage on your first shot. Okay, Nessie time.
dark. Oh, this is not- this is not a good start to this. Bro, why are you not giving me Devour? Like, what the fuck? Are you serious right now? Fucking hell, dude. <sighs> Fuck. I got a fucking buggy, man. I do not have time for this. again. Bro, why are you not tracking on that guy? I might die here. Because it's dark, right? I've got to get this. I've got to make it over. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm literally fine, bro. Literally never lost these in my entire life. I don't have any... Give me an orb, please. Please. Brother fucking die. Bruh. Oh, this is no good. We're fine. Everything's fine, chat. Calm the fuck down. Okay? Calm the fuck down, chat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Dark. Man, I cannot hit that shot today. Holy. Oh, please. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. If I get slowed one more time, I swear to God. <gasps> no! What? Oh, I thought I didn't even hear him go up. I didn't even hear him go up, man. Fuck. 
Jesus. I don't know why he's being such a pain in the ass right now, man. What a bitch, dude. Fuck. Oh, that sucks. I had that, too. I... I had that. I was just being like, I, I was just being slowed everywhere. Like. Like. Fuck, that was such a good damage phase too, like. Are you serious? Like... I'm dead. <sighs> Fuck, man. Fuck. I just can't. I'm getting impatient. I'm losing my mind. I just want to finish this. No way I should be wiping on Nez of all fucking things. This is the easiest one. This is the, this is the easiest one. Just go and fucking kill him. Cannot be wiping on Nez. Absolutely not. Dark. This is a bad idea, but I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. Bro, the guys who slow me are the fucking worst. Leave me alone.
Oh, this is no good. I might die here, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Lights. Please stop, bro! What a bitch. Thank fucking God. Oh, I'm dumb. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
just trying to kill that guy. Oh, I can't believe I didn't die there. I cannot believe I did not die there. Sheesh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is right. Okay, well, that's solo in one sitting. That's solo in one sitting. Let's go. Not solo flawless, but. Good enough. My memory will never extinguish. I don't know how many deaths that ended up being, but it, I think it was less than 10. So. I'll take it. All right, well, that's, that's where I am. Pretty good.
I need to I need to get more consistent, but I think we're going to start solo flawless attempts um, Friday. So, all right, everyone. Have a great night. I'll see you very soon. Peace out.